All right, I got it. Ooh, that's loud. Ooh. Ooh, that's loud. I don't want to be too loud. That's a bit loud. Damn. All right. Uh. Yes. Come on now. You guys like the uh, spaceship? I made it myself. Sorry if I'm sniffly, but I'm feeling much better. And three, two, one. Welcome. <laughs> it's going to take a minute for the song to stop, isn't it? There you go. Uh, I don't know what that is. There's this weird delay in OBS right now that just uh, keeps the music playing or whatever. Welcome to Space Station, Hal. How are you? I, uh, I've i been messing around with AI lately, so I made myself a ship. <coughs> I hope that's okay with you guys. Welcome aboard. I promise I'll I'll keep the pod bay door open for you. Um, And uh, yes, there is subtle Starfield moving in the background. You're welcome. <laughs> Can you guys tell, like, what I do when I'm, like, fidgety and can't fix problems that exist? So I'm like, well, if I can't fix what's bad, at least I can make what's good better. Maybe that'll be it. Perhaps that would be a thing. Hold on, Mike. Uh, um, JavaScript error. That happens. Um, hi. Okay, Mike's good. Audio's good. Here we go. Echo and overlap and all that. Uh, it gets weird. I, I, I have yet to figure out... Um, Andrea and CSL, what that is right now, it seems to be, I think there's probably an update necessary, but it, one's not showing up yet. So <clears throat> anyway, so yes, I made a spaceship, designed it, um, with, uh, with the help of AI. Boy, did we have an argument about the design of my ship. I would just, I'm just saying, I am far too polite to work with AI. Seriously, because it doesn't care. It can't. It is incapable of caring. And yet I'm like, could you make it maybe, could it be a little, if you, could you try? It wouldn't be nice if, if you know, what I'm really looking for is like, 
I'm I'm being polite to a thing that can't experience my politeness. It's just it's a strange thing. It's and I'm not going to stop. As a matter of fact, I think Apple Apple if you're listening, I hope you can find my notes about this, but I genuinely think that uh you should be able to train uh the S lady on your Apple computers and the A lady on your Googleness and the Cortana on a S box, okay? Because they're still having the Cortana, okay? And she's great. She's very sassy. Um, that you should be able to treat uh, treat them politely and have them respond. So if they say, hey, can you give me this? Or can I, what, what's the weather like tomorrow? And they say something and then they respond to you. You can go, thank you. And they go, you're welcome. Like, you know what I mean? Just to, so we don't raise a generation of children that uh, interact with AI so often that th- they become dicks. Jim Jordan is batshit crazy. This is true. This is true. Absolutely. Let's uh, hopefully, hold on. Let's see if my chat window works. Hey, there you are. Welcome to space chat. Hello. Hello. Welcome. Isn't this nice? And then it's just the two of us out in space. Oh, there's a layer of chat. You have too much chat. There's too much chatting going on. We take this chat out and then you'll be the big chat. There you are. Much better. Also, I think, uh, command plus. Oops. Yeah, let me make that a little bit bigger. Nice background. Thank you very much. Thanks very much. I, I, I spent a little time. I would, you know, the lighting should be a little better so that it matches space world. I'll work on that. But until then, this, you know, this is pretty good, but welcome. To, and I feel like it, there should be some Vangelis music playing in the background or some like the quietude of space. In, in space, no one can hear Cupcake scream. And that's because Cupcake doesn't work on this laptop, but that we'll work on that. Thank you, patrons. Uh, we'll get there eventually. But in the meantime, I have a show tonight, so I'm doing kind of a, a shortish stream today. And what we're going to deal with is, and please work, please work, please work. Yeah, there he goes. Look at this. Uh, Trump looks like he was caught coming. Uh, this is, uh, let me see if I can shrink this down to the, win- the window size that's appropriate. Try to move this around. Uh, <clears throat> President Trump expected to speak to, and he's like, Hey, who's who's expecting yours truly? Popping out from behind uh, this. He's speaking at the Conservative Radio Broadcasters Association. And this is the one. Now, this isn't CPAC. CPAC is the one. Oh, fuck you. Why is my, okay, my monitor went out for a second. Um, CPAC is the one. I got to turn off. Stop listening. All right. Um, my, uh, my Mac was listening to me. Also uh, is... Uh, but that's fine. Okay, good. All right, I think we're all right. System settings, stream this. this uh, um, okay. Voice isolation, stand. Okay, that's good. Now, uh, everything sound okay? Look okay? Before we move ahead, fingers crossed. Uh, this is uh, uh <laughs> we're welcome to space station. Stupid. Um, this is Trump speaking at this uh Christian broadcasters at at, at the NRB convention. National radio broadcasters or something. Anyways, he, um, uh, I have not gotten a chance to watch this, but uh, anywhere where Trump tries to suck up to Christians is a good time as far as I'm concerned. And, you know, uh, John Fugel saying was lovely enough to be on my show, bad audio and all uh, from his end. And I thought it was me the entire time. And it turned out to be audio coming from his side. So we will, we got to fix his shit as well. Campers, we're going to, we're going to hook up Boston Brian. We're going to, build out Texas Paul's fucking studio shit. I'm going to go down to Texas Paul's house and we're going to make him like a studio shed and just build that fucking thing out of, out of, I like wood. Um, we're going to make it happen. And then on John Fugel saying thing, we gotta, we gotta work on getting his setup because he's got a serious show to do seriously, seriously. All right. <clears throat> so let's jump into this before I run out of time and I have to leave to go to do my show. This is Trump speaking this. And I think he, they're playing fucking, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Hey, they just started the song. Thank you. Nice to shake. Hello. It's nice to be on stage with someone. D- let go of my hand. Thank you. I'll, you leave and I'll stand here like an ass hat and clap, clap, clap. Hey, thank you. Clump, 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 clump. Clap, 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 clap. Oh, oh no, it did not quit. Okay. 
That's fine. It didn't quit. It's still on. You're still on, right? I'm still on, right? I'm on. Yes, chat room. Uh, 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 uh. Just stand there. Let everybody get a good look at your nunt. Good times. Matt Schlapp is definitely there. It's just totally, yeah. This is a squirt, squirt. Yep, that's for you, Matt. Hey, Matt Schlapp. Yeah, just, just, uh, blazingly jettison your, your conservative goo all over my Chinese tie. Squirt, squirt. Um, okay. Standing here like an asshole. Why didn't, squirt, squirt. Uh, it's a little, you know, little Canadian rub and tug. You know what I mean? Nothing, nothing to write home about, but it'll, you know, get the job done. <laughs> um, I have a, my next punk band is going to be called Canadian Handjob. I'm just telling you. Um, <laughs> by the way, point of pride, point of pride, Canadians. Nothing to be ashamed of. Just saying. Um, okay. Standing here like an asshole. Stare straight ahead. Try to look tough. Let everybody think for about 10 seconds that you're not out of your fucking mind. Do everything you can to not just... to. I, 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 I'm, they don't know I'm a loser. They don't know I'm a loser. Only mom knows I'm a loser. I'm not a loser. I'm kind of a loser, actually. And these people probably know it. It's very sad. U.S.A. <laughs> okay, squirt, squirt, squirt. Thank you. You gotta finish the fucking song. And then... Wow, thank you very much. Yeah, great. Thank you. Yeah, sure, great. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank what a you. group. There was no way I was going to miss this. The plane was coming in. That plane was coming in. I said, are we okay to the pilot? He said, uh, I think so. I didn't like that answer. I think we're okay, sir. I think we should be okay. I'm saying, should we turn back? He said, I wouldn't mind if we did. I said, I don't have the courage to turn back from these people. Just land the sucker, would you please? Little little rough weather out there. Thank you very oh. much, everybody. <clears throat> by the way, <clears throat> he was late by a couple of hours, apparently. Um, uh, the idea that it, to blame it on the weather or the pilot or anything is anybody's guess. I doubt it. Two honor to be Hi, here in this beautiful... You're very welcome. Nashville with... This is a great place. Nashville is so good at the Dollywood with the big... <laughs> With the National Religious Broadcasters. What an important group. And they're giving you a hard time in Washington, but you won't have a hard time in about uh, 11 months from now, I can tell you. <laughs> Why? Because he'll be in, I guess you'll, because Biden will be in for another four years and you'll be like, oh shit, we can, we make so much money going against Biden on the air. If Trump gets in, we're fucked. He makes all the money. We don't make dick. But with Biden in, cha-ching, we're in the money. You won't have a hard time. Let me begin. <laughs> okay. He's putting, uh, uh <laughs> sorry, all hard jokes aside. Nope, 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 nope. Saying congratulations on 80 incredible years of spreading the great word of God. It's really Ooh. great. It what is you great. Do is very important. Yeah, the great word of a god. Any any god in particular or you you you're not even gonna go with the Lord? Let me thank the president and let me thank uh first of all a god CEO of NRB Troy Miller, Executive Vice President Linda Smith, NRB Chairman Jim Sanders. Oh, you got the whole group here today. This is power. This is power from above. Yes, they're, they're God's people, absolutely. And no one can talk to God but through them. They're basically Jesus, but like a committee, like the Jesus Committee. General Counsel Michael Ferris, Director of Public <laughs> Policy, Noel Heisinger, as well as Ambassador David Friedman. And David, where is David? Where is my David? Are you gonna, I'm going to get you up here in a little while. I think we got to hear a little bit. Of He's a little high. It, I don't know if it's, I don't know if he started drinking. It would not surprise me. But uh, the meds are kicking in right now, and they might be a it might be a bad mix. What's going on over there? We got to get you up here, Mr. Man. 
Woo! Uh, and God. Uh, love it, God. Art am a God lover. Who doesn't love God? Am I right, people? Former Congresswoman, a terrific person, Michelle Bachman. Where's Michelle? Where is Michelle? Hi, Michelle. Hi. 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 Long time. Doing a great job. Heritage Foundation president, somebody else doing an unbelievable job. He's bringing it back to levels it's never seen. Dr. Kevin Roberts. Kevin, thank you, Kevin. Kevin, thank you, wherever you may be. He's busy making the Heritage Foundation come back to levels it's never seen since it's seen these levels before. Or some shit. Thank you, Kevin. Pastor Robert Jeffers, he's up there all the time. And he's he's doing that preaching shit, whatever that is. He's talking. I go to his, I, I like going to his church and, and doing the waddle. Waddle for Jesus. Just kind of, just wagging back and forth. Like the giant, like the the giant stub tail of the dog that is God. Saying good things. A long time ago, when I just uh, announced, he was on Fox of all places, and he said, uh, "No, he may not know the Bible as well as some." He, he may not know the Bible as well as some. I, I like to think I knew the Bible fairly well. Do you, d chat room, does anyone in the, do you consider yourself someone who knows the Bible very well or somewhat well or some well or Sam well or Sam Rockwell? Knew the Bible? Hmm. Not know every passage. He doesn't know any passage, fuckhead. <laughs> We're not talking about pegging the needle. We're talking about making it move at all. He may not know it actually so well at all, but he... Jesus. Greatest leader, and he is a believer and a strong believer, and he's going to take us to places that we would never have been taken before. And he you mean where IVF is outlawed or some shit? Is that like getting rid of contraceptives? That, that kind of going... All right. To be right. He turned out to be right. So About you not knowing shit about the Bible? And taking us places that we never expected to go. <laughs> Very much. Robert Jeffress, great guy. Pastor Jack Hibbs. Thank you, Pastor. Got a lot of, we got a lot of the big shots here tonight. And Pastors James Ward and Sharon Ward. Thank you very much. Yeah, they're a great duo. Whatever. You should just, he plays the mouth harp and she plays the juice harp. And together they're harping on something. Man who's treated me most of the time is pretty good, and I like him. And he is a smart guy. You, you, it. Where are you? You. Where are you? Yeah. Is it just me, or is he seem drunk? Genuinely, like, like, like. I mean, maybe it's not alcohol. Maybe it's you know, ambient and a head wound, but. Thank you. Another man who's, uh, I just think he's an incredible guy. He's a patriot. He loves his country. Sebastian Gorka. 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 Those two guys are really amazing. And everybody at Salem Media Group, you've been incredible. You really are. And you're very popular. More popular than you would even know. No, they, they know exactly. I mean, they have... They have entire systems knowing where, what stations are doing well and where and when and when they're on the air and what the, it, they have a thing, it, it's called ratings that, um, th that that's how they charge people for the advertising, which is their, how they pay for most stuff. So that's how they know exactly how, um, <clears throat> Of course, a very special thanks to all of the inspiring people in the audience today, the broadcasters and communicators, the brave, independent Christian journalists, and they are brave. The and they are Christian, and they are independent. They've got no money. ...who go to the world's most dangerous places, and I don't know how you do it. You're among the bravest people in the world. Alabama? You do a job that nobody could do but you. Well, uh, I, I got I to gotta tell you, a lot of them... When they go, they have uh, UN forces acting as their security while they do it, oftentimes. Like, they're in secure areas uh, to do this stuff. And so, the not, uh, yes, they are, I guess, brave indeed for going there or whatever, but they, 
not as brave as the people with the rifles who are keeping them alive while they do it. But again, you know, fuck the troops. I guess that's Trump's message here. And the pastors, podcasters, producers, and patriots whose ministry... And pussies, because I love to grab them. That's just anything that starts with a P, I'll grab it. ...up the spirits of tens of millions of Americans. You're doing incredible, an incredible thing for humanity, and we really do appreciate it. Thank you very much. That's incredible people. Thank you. We're going to save this country. It will be thanks to the men... <laughs> and women like you, like the people in this audience. And there's, but there's no one like you. Are represented by the best. The people who make God's work, your work. God's work, your work. That's what you do. And I want to. It's the people who make God's work, your work. You are the people who make God's work, your work. That's the phrase. He just didn't understand it until he actually read it out loud. Thank you all. Incredible job. Thank you very much. When this legendary organization was founded eight decades ago, it was in another moment of crisis. We are in a crisis right now. We've got... Well, you and Alina, I guess, and yeah. I mean, I don't know who the fuck's left on your legal team, so who can, I, who, who can say? Incompetent president who doesn't know what the hell he's doing. <laughs> he will not lead us to the promised land, as the expression goes. Oh, fuck you. 1944 was the year of D-Day, the Battle of the Bull. In, in his defense, though, Trump was promised land on Little St. James Island. So, as far as promised land goes. General Douglas MacArthur's famous return to the Philippines. Please sit down. We'll be here for a little while. Ah, uh, daddy's had a couple of shots of, uh, of happy, happy. <laughs> Morphine and ketamine. That's what Brian says in the chat room. Uh, anybody got, uh, I'd love to hear what your recipes are in the chat room. Let me know what you think uh, Trump is is high on, what mixture of chemicals, what um, Dr. Ronnie Jackson go-go juice he's been sipping on. The scissor, perhaps? We've got a lot of time. I'm going to go with cold medicine. Cold medicine and uh, sleeping pills. Our country was at war with the enemy and wanted, they wanted to extinguish our way of life forever. It was a very bad time, but. Yeah, it was. It's any time we're at war with an enemy that wants to extinguish our way of life. I'd, I'd categorize that as a bad time. Yeah, yeah. I mean, in comparison to good times, you know what I mean? <laughs> Here at home, Christians knew that victory depended not only on the force of American arms, but Roll. also... I got rolling on E, Diet Coke and meth, baby oil and diaper dust, Adderall and Diet Coke. There's a lot of di mixed with... We shouldn't mix these things with Diet Coke is what the chat room seems to be saying. I, you're, you're very wise, chat room. You're very wise. Don't forget to hit the like, by the way. Let people know I'm here. Faith in American hearts. And we've got to get more of that back in our country today. We really do. Yeah, we got to get more faith in people's hearts. Right now, it's not in their hearts. Uh, some people have it in their gallbladder, I've heard. You know, it's not good. People talk about the gallbladder. When you drink a lot of Diet Coke, they say the gallbladder a lot. The doctor says it to you while he has a, a finger in your ass. And, uh, and you're saying, I've got a sore throat. <laughs> get more of it back. Your institution was formed to give voice to an army of preachers and ministers and faith leaders who fought every day to strengthen America with the good news of the gospel and the love of Jesus Christ. Today, we are in another struggle for survival of our nation. I believe it's the most dangerous point in the history of our country. You, you are a very silly man. Is it the power of the weaponry? <coughs> The weaponry, right? That's what it is. There because of nukes. Because during the Cold War, we never had to deal with that. No longer army tanks going back and forth. No, there are literally army tanks going back and forth. Like in both major war zones right now, there are literally army tanks going back and back and forth. As a matter of fact, it's 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 an old school battle, very much like World War Two. Blasting each other out, it's... Yeah, that's what they do. They blast each other out. <sniffs> As opposed to what? Suck each other off. They blast each other out. Huh? 
point in the history of our country because uh-huh. of the power of the How does war go? Weaponry. Uh-huh. It's no longer army tanks going back and forth, it's blasting each other out. It's nuclear weapons and other weapons that are... Yeah, yeah. and worse than nuclear weapons, you know. <laughs> just as devastating. Yeah, just as devastating as nukes, you know, like... Uh, Identity theft. That's what it is. And we need brilliant people to do the. Well, thanks. I uh, I couldn't be there at that thing. I was invited, oddly. Uh, and if you don't have that, it's going to be a very bad time for the world. This time, the greatest threat is... Yeah, I don't know what that was. I don't know what that statement was at all. That's very stupid. It's not from the outside of our country. I really believe this. It's from within. It's the people from within our country. It's fucking Americans that are fucking up America by being all American. What a bunch of assholes. What's wrong with you people? More dangerous than the people outside. We can handle China. We can handle Russia. We can handle all of them if you have a smart leader. Well, we are. But the inside people are very dangerous. Ooh, the inside people. Watch out for the inside people. They They could be anybody. They could be sitting right next to you. They could be, uh, you know, you know, just look around. Is there anybody in the room that looks kind of sketchy? Like, like they're in a, I don't know, a fake relationship being a beard for their husband who runs conversion camps and tried to weasel her way into the government. And maybe she was kicked out, but perhaps now she's going to work her way back in. I don't know. It's a possibility. They're very sick people, in my opinion, in many cases, they're sick. Well, if they're sick, then I that, then they're really not to blame, are they? It's not their fault. I mean, a sick person isn't to blame for their sickness. Obviously, if they if they meant to do it, if they were evil, then they would, obviously we could do something about that. We could you know round them up and I don't know what do we do? Uh, see if they sink. I'm here today because I know that to achieve victory in this fight, just like in the battles of the past, we still need the hand of our Lord and. The grace of Almighty God, we have to have that. Yeah, we need that whole grace thing, and the and the and uh, we need the fisting of uh, of our Lord, and hopefully he'll do it thumb first. Because I don't know if I could, you know, the full payout. Oh, somebody said Doc in Paradise says fentanyl lollipops. That uh, there is a there is a, a a chain of custody. There's a there's evidence that that might be actually a thing that Trump wanted fentanyl lollipops. Maybe, maybe that's why he flies down to Texas all the fucking time. Our country is being destroyed by a radical left, corrupt political class that has gone communist, Marxist, and even fascist. I used to say we will never have a socialist state. And I was right. We passed over socialism. Socialism's a nice way by comparison to where we are. Yeah, we, we're, we're not in a communist fascist state at all. We're not in a police state. We're not at all. Half these motherfuckers were at a football game last weekend. Nobody's getting arrested off the street for fucking protesting peacefully. The fuck is he talking about? No. Also, he's getting busted for his financial crimes so that our financial system, which is capitalist, can continue and actually function. From Joe Biden on down, and I'm not sure that Biden knows what the hell's going on. I don't think he knows he's alive, actually. <laughs> and I- You know he's alive. He seems to, it seems to, it seems to drive you a little bit nuts. I used to say that until I got indicted. Then I said, <laughs> okay, now I can say it like it is. They said, well, we'll never indict a popular American president. Don't forget, I got more votes. We got. Oh, by the way, uh, they did a list of the best and worst presidents in the world. He came in last. So as far as popular American presidents go, I I, I think we found the technical reason why you got indicted. You're not, <clears throat> suffice to say, a popular American president. More votes all of us together than any. By the way, a new Quinnipiac to- poll puts uh, Biden ahead of Trump <clears throat> in registered voters. Trust me, this is going to be a rolling thing. And, and, and quite frankly, I, I think we're better off if people think that Trump is ahead during this whole thing because he's going to lose. The problem is, is that if these illusions and these polls that make it look like he's ahead in some areas are going to lead him when he loses to go, it was rigged because look how much I was winning by. Then any president, think of it, 
than any president, sitting president in the history of our country. You're not, you're not a sitting president. Votes in any, by far, by a lot. Oh, oh, yeah, the votes. Okay, yeah, yeah. But also, you, you lost by a bigger margin than almost any president in history. And Joe Biden got the most votes for president in the history of America. Because everybody was able to vote. And uh... and also, I would like to say uh, there was no double voting for Joe Biden. There were a lot of people that voted twice, dozens of them, in uh, in the 2020 election. And all of them so far voted for Donald Trump. And lots of bad things happen. Very oh, bad. We can very never bad. let that happen again. They rigged the election. And look at the mess our country's in right now. Would have never happened, including inflation. Israel wouldn't have been attacked. Ukraine wouldn't have been attacked. China wouldn't be thinking about Taiwan. Wouldn't. Again, we're, we're going to police the what countries think and also bullshit. Be thinking about it. There'd be no inflation. It was energy that caused it. We had inexpensive energy. We have more liquid gold under our feet, think of it, than any other country in the world that we don't use it. No, Venezuela actually has more oil reserves than we do, including Anwar, but we don't need it. We just need to get basically 20% of commuter cars electric um, and uh, we'll never have to deal with another foreign country for oil or gas ever again. Wouldn't that be nice? We go to Venice. But this dickhead wants us to like be subservient to the Saudis forever because they're they're going to back him financially. To get their tar. It's so sad. It's so pathetic. From Joe Biden on down, they have. Also, we don't we don't take Venezuela's quote tar. They process it. A private company in Texas processes their oil because they can and they will and they do and they make a fee for it the united states makes tax dollars off of it we don't use it it's i don't know what the fuck like he drags on this and all the time don't open our borders to how did trump lose worse than mondale uh it's a good question i by volume of voters um i think he was pretty much in line Electoral College, just some other big routes where people lost, but in, but there are there were a lot more people voting in this election um, because of mail-in voting because people had because of COVID people voted early and they made sure they voted and they were very careful to make sure their vote got in on time and there was all that shit with Louis DeJoy so a lot of people hand delivered their ballot because they were worried about it getting lost in the mail or slow or not getting there on time or not you know them getting cheated out of their vote so you had more Democrats especially actually gave a fuck about voting and um this time around and that really did it illegal alien invasion by the world's most sadistic criminals and savage gangs well you mean the national religious broadcasters association peaceful pro-life citizens behind bars we have a new category of crime i said it last night for the first time we did a show a show laura ingram highest rating she's ever had how about that don't we love that what do I get out of it? I get nothing. So what difference does it make? What do they give me? Nothing. That's right. You broke fuck. You got nothing. You don't even get a, but she gets, a, she's paid for that shit and you had to pay for it. Here's what you got. A fucking ass kissing, a massive, wasted, worthless ass kissing. She tried to put some blinders on you so you wouldn't fuck up a, your, your free lunch at Fox News. And she failed. There were a lot of people watching, but uh-huh. Uh you just see what, what's happening. You see so many things happening that are I do, I do, I do. I was outside yet like the other day I was at like the where was I? Oh, I was at a gas station. So I was driving from Vegas to here today, and I stop at this uh this there's a couple of gas stations that are kind of my regular stops that I make when I have when I'm making the drive. <laughs> and this time I tried to I was like, I'm going to stop at different places. And there's this a ridiculous one with a giant, like, a uh, Froyo thing on top of it on the 15 that sells, like, bulk candy, like, rows and rows. It's the weirdest fucking place. It's very shiny and very bright. But I decided to, like, I'll go in this one and I'll use the bathroom because the last time I was there, like, the bathrooms were really clean and I'll get some gas and I'll get some, maybe I'll get some Froyo. Who knows? It might be magic. And I go in there and it was fucking packed. And I turned around and went back out and drove and continued to drive down the, the freeway, like, two more miles. But Jesus Christ, it, it was full of fucking people buying fucking 
bulk candy and walking around with fucking giant ice cream and froyos and sodas and buying beef jerky and all kinds of shit. And and I'm like, I guarantee at that particular stop, like just by looking around the crowd with the number of like dudes with bill caps on backwards with like fucking sunglasses on top of the hat and and like a a, a sports or biker or, you know, like a shirt with a skull on the back that says, you know, I, I kill because it makes me happy or whatever the fuck, like this no fear gear and all that shit. You know, those folks, all of them Trump voters, all of them are just like slather. Hey, get me some of them Gigi fruits. Burp, burp, burp. Like you know, America sucks right now, whatever. Oh my God, this is so much cheaper in bulk. Like Jesus Christ. All these folks having a great time. And then if you ask them 10 minutes later, they go, this country's going to fucking hell, man. Uh, you ever stop at Peggy Sue's Diner outside of Barso? I have not. I've driven by the sign many times, but I have never stopped. It's unthinkable. It's unthinkable that. No, I can think of everything. I don't, don't, just because you're uncreative, don't drag me into your personal hell. Millions of people would be allowed into our country. It's unthinkable. Who would, who would do this? Well, millions of people were let into the country under your administration. Your numbers, but for the, but for COVID, um, for for the record, but for COVID 2020, because America had more COVID cases than Mexico did, and people were afraid to come into the United States. People who were coming up through Mexico were like, fuck, I'm not going in there. Everybody's, they're losing people like fucking crazy. It was the greatest keep out of America sign in the world was, uh, was COVID. But for that year, his numbers were worse than the Obama years. They would be <clears throat> without 2020 and the shutdowns involved in that and, tra you know, trucks and all the kind of extra shit where people sneak through hiding in trucks and all that kind of stuff. With all of that shit, with, you know, but for all that shit being shut down, he'd have worse numbers than Biden, period. And by the way, the only reason, you know, Biden had a bunch of numbers besides Title 42, creating this kind of like conveyor belt of people crossing multiple times was the backup from that year, people who came all the way up, stopped just short of the border and went, I'm not going in yet. And then as soon as there was people were getting vaccinated and our vaccines worked, they were like, I'll go in there and they'll probably vaccinate me. And then I'd go back fucking home. A bunch of people did that. We've unleashed mobs of foreign jihadists to praise Hamas in our streets. They're praising Hamas while they slander law abiding Americans as domestic terrorists. You heard the j6 hostages you saw the spirit the spirit that these people have oh by the way they um the spirit of j6 or whatever was the name of that song that they call it the j6 spirit anthem is that song that he had on itunes that he where he beat K taylor swift or whatever the fuck um in an afternoon when she had nothing coming out and they just somebody just bought a shit ton of copies of it to push it to the top or whatever. It's called the 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 J6 Spirit Anthem. And so he's got the word spirit stuck in his fucking head. That's why he says it multiple times. Spirit, you would think they wouldn't have any spirit left, but they have tremendous spirit. Right, because it's called the Spirit Anthem and he can't, he's got, you know, uh, Biden sometimes because he has a stutter, a word will come out, uh, like he'll, he'll be trying to make a word come out and he can't do it. So he tries to find another word. That's what a lot of stutterers do. Find another word that means the same thing that you can say. And so your brain goes through that kind of loop of, OK, that word's not coming out, but I'll I'll find another word that means it. And then I'll say that one instead because I won't stutter on that word. And it's a, something they deal with all the time. Trump has the exact opposite problem. He gets a weird fixation and it's it's got to be prefrontal dementia. But he's he fixates on a word and he can't stop saying it like oranges. Same thing with the spirit thing right here. It's like this whole thing. You heard the J6 hostages. You saw the spirit, the spirit that these people have, the spirit. You would think they wouldn't have any spirit left, but they have tremendous spirit. What? Spirit. What? Spirit. Yes, he did, sir. No, spirit, bravado, a touch of daring do about 1130, sir. It's happened to them is probably to that extent never happened in our country before. Benedict Arnold, Civil War. Does he have any idea what the Rosenbergs? This this motherfucker probably wants to like pardon Snowden and give him national security uh, clearance again. They're weaponizing law enforcement to target parents conservatives and Catholics, Catholics, more than anybody, Catholics, what's going on with Catholics? I don't know. What is it? They've got, uh, now that there's a Catholic in the White House, they're being treated worse than ever. 
except they're not. Um, by the way, uh, nothing is going on with Catholics. Nothing. There are a couple of people that were um, pro-life protesters that were shoving people and getting in the way and obstructing people going in or threatening people turned out to be Catholic. They were arrested. Nothing else is going on with Catholics. That's it. That's that's what he's talking. That's he doesn't know what he's talking about. That's why he literally means it when he's like, what's going on with Catholics? He doesn't know. He doesn't know that a couple of Catholic pro-lifers were arrested for uh, for pushing people in front of a, an abortion clinic. A co- like fucking what? Twenty twenty one. Yeah, it, like they're weaponizing law enforcement to target parents, conservatives and Catholics, Catholics. More than anybody, Catholics. What's going on with Catholics? Do we have any Catholics in this audience? Raise your hand, please. I just want to see. Yeah, there's not very many. It's a, this is an evangelical Christian endeavor. Like, Catholics don't do a lot of AM radio, fuckhead. (laughs) But I will tell you how to. Not too many. Well, they've all been arrested, obviously, by the Biden regime. It's part of his uh, Catholic purge. You know, the the worst thing I think is that I think we're all upset at, uh, you know, Catholic on Catholic crime. Black mass, they call it. How do you vote for this person? They this have- person who's a Catholic. I don't know. You mean the guy who goes to church, who actually goes to mass, who fucking on Ash Wednesday is walking around with ash on his fucking forehead? You mean the guy who goes to church every Sunday and then goes to his son's grave? That fucking guy? The devout Catholic, the only second Catholic president in the history of America. Gee, I I don't know. After Catholics, that's probably why we don't have any of this audience. There are none left. (laughs) No, no, no. By the way, they're laughing because there aren't going to be any Catholics in that audience because most of the people in that audience don't like them. These are these are these are Presbyterians and Lutherans and evangelicals, a lot of evangelicals, and they don't fucking like the Catholics at all. But there's one sitting in first row, and he's a very important one, I will tell you. No, but how Catholics are- Yeah, well, hey, give it up for my Catholic American over there. They've been, they're being persecuted, Catholics. Catholics. I keep I can't stop saying Catholics. But evangelicals and evangelicals, those are the, they, they're earlier, you know, evangelicals are later, obviously, evangelicals right out of the gate. They're all on the list. Yeah. In alphabetical order. Evangelicals would be first, I guess. Catholics would be third after Baptists. For all Americans, but especially for Christians, nothing is more important than to defeat this wicked system and to return to fair, equal, and impartial justice under the constitutional ro- rule of law. You have to return to the constitutional... What's happening, fellas? Oh. What's that? I'm doing my show. It's all right. Oh. Tig's walking in, everybody. Tig's coming in there. They got to... Unlo- hold on. I got to give somebody a hug real quick, and then I'll continue my show. What's happening, man? I didn't mean to interrupt you. That's all right. You got to load out, right? You guys, you're doing your thing? Oh, yeah. yeah. Here, lean in here and say, Tig, everybody. It's Tig. Hi. Um, so, yeah, I, I'm just doing my show, and then I've got flappers tonight. you got a gig, and so you're going to pack the drums up. Yeah, and be quiet. You guys, don't worry about it. I love you. You won't understand half of what I'm talking about, but I'm watching him at the Christian Broadcasters Network or, or Association gathering or whatever, Trump, you know, giving a speech there. and yeah, that's That came out today, what the, what the platform wants to be. Uh, have, you, have you taken a look? Which one? Uh, the, the guy that at that Christian think tank that uh, wants to propose the new uh, platform for the Republican Party of... No birth control. Yeah, no no IVF, none of that stuff. And if a girl's wearing shorts uh, and she gets raped and he's on the jury, um, he will vote against her because men are men and women shouldn't be out in shorts. Great. Because she was asking for it. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Okay. Yeah. I'm hot. Does that mean you can rape me? Uh, Well, that, no, because you you would be asking for it, literally. Oh. You and I have a safe word. Yeah. Tig, Tig's safe word is harder. <laughs> and it's weird. Please more. It's, a never, it's never a word he has to say. <laughs> that's all right no no it's good um anyways everybody says uh tell a tig hi dude hi tig uh tig is amazing tig's great i agree tig is a terrific drummer and a fantastic musician and an awesome guy and a, and a beautiful singer and a great human being i'm just saying all right 
<clears throat> now, back to what I was doing. I'm sorry that Tig can't hear the audio of this clip in the background because I think he would laugh. You would laugh right along, yeah. Rule of law. We're not there. There's much work to be done, but there is no doubt where we have to begin. We have to begin, and we have to begin immediately. The re- <laughs> There's no question where we have to start. We have to start where the starting point of the beginning part of the be- of the start is, because that's the best place <clears throat> until someone uh, cranks the teleprompter and lets me know what the next word is, because... I can't, how many times can a man say start? Duration of law and justice in America begins with firing crooked Joe Biden on November 5th, 2024. If we don't fire him, our country, I believe, is doomed. I believe it's. <laughs> if uh, Joe Biden's still president after November uh, 4th, which he will be, and if, even if he loses, he will be until January of the next year, um, the, 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 our country is doomed. It's a big word big word doomed uh and i don't want he might be right uh let's give him a give him the benefit of the doubt now he said this about 2020 and so far not doomed yet very, very we're very short on doom currently but as you know the left is trying to shame christians they try and shame us 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 yeah you know christians like you and me like uh, you know, that I'm with you guys. Hey, wait up! It's the 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 Christian meditations of Donald Trump. Um, pick me, pick me. I'm a very proud Christian, actually. I've been very- actually. If you have to say I'm a very proud Christian, actually, <laughs> I don't know. I think the actually part kind of gives it away that you're not. Uh, it doesn't come up. You don't bring it up that often. If, if you have to say actually, then you haven't told anybody that you're, or shown anybody, I think is the key thing. Shown anybody that you're a an actual Christian. Busy <laughs> fighting and, you know, taking the, the bullets, taking the arrows. I'm taking them for you and I'm so honored to take them. You have no... Okay, first of all, uh, the whole, like, uh, he, it, it's a weird fucking sentence, but... um. I'm a very tr- uh, I'm a proud Christian actually, but I've been very busy, which seems to be his excuse for why he never goes to church. That's what I, I, I that's all I can gather from what the fuck he's saying right there is that he seems to be saying, I've been too busy to go to church. Um, golfing. First of all, there is no court on fucking Sunday. Um, if he hadn't been criming, he wouldn't have to even have meetings with his lawyers on Sundays. Not that he does. But I think primarily what we see here is a man who is is basically trying to make an excuse to a bunch of people why none of them have ever seen him set foot in a church except at a campaign stop specifically at a church like an evangelical church that's known for getting out the vote for conservatives in one particular district or another like Iowa or, or, or South Carolina, something like that. I think he's been to one. Um, but he doesn't have his own. That should be the giveaway. The Bidens do. He doesn't have a church of his own that he goes to. I like my mom has her church that we go to when I'm in Kentucky. I do not have a church basically because there are no Odenic, um, you know, rune based Viking churches in the Vegas or Los Angeles area that I know of. I mean, obviously, there's probably a cave somewhere where people in hoods and cowls stand. And yeah, easy. Easy, Tig. Uh, uh, that I, and I would totally go. But this motherfucker golfs on Sunday. Let's just be honest. He hasn't been busy with anything but golf. Get the fuck out of here. As you know, the left is trying to shame Christians. They try and shame us. Us. I'm a very proud Christian, actually. I've been very busy. That's what that is. I've been very busy, which is like, his, like he knows people are there like, I don't know. Why did I never see you come to our church? Why why don't you never go to church? Why you certainly don't come to our church? But do you go to any church? I've been busy. That's a, that he's he probably more than likely said something like this walking up on stage to one of these pastors that met him backstage. Fighting and you know taking the the bullets, taking the arrows. I'm taking them for you. 
slings and arrows, dumb fuck. Slings and arrows, not bullets and arrows. You have been, you have not taken a fucking bullet, Mister. No president has had it worse than me. Not even Kennedy, Lincoln, Garfield. I'm so honored to take him. You have no idea. I'm being. You're right. I have no idea. I did for you, as I say. I'm being indicted over and over and over. Why? Why? So they can learn not to defraud banks. I think they had that shit figured out. Most of them don't pay any fucking taxes. I've been indicted more than Al Capone, the great gangster. Well, the point is, by the way, I'd like to address this if I may. Uh, first of all, Al Capone, not great. Pretty awful. Also, uh, ran orphanages and the, orphan uh, the, the orphanages were run fairly well and the orphans uh, survived where they may not have. And he used that charity itself as cover for the awful that he did. It does not mean that that thing is wrong or bad. It just doesn't ab absolve him of the murders that he was involved in. But the, the thing about Capone was is that he killed everyone that would be a witness or scared the fuck out of them knowing they would die if they became a witness. And therefore they had to get him on tax evasion. That's they would have indicted him for dozens of fucking things. Notice he doesn't bring up Gotti, which is somebody he used to, he thinks he was emulating for a while. Scarface. My parents are looking down. They said, do you believe this happened to me? I never heard the word before, you know, essentially. Essentially, I've never heard the word indictment without kung kung. I heard the word before. Think of it. I've been indicted more than some of the greatest criminals in the world. Yes, you're among the greatest criminals in the world. They would be embarrassed to hear that, but <laughs> most well known. I don't know about greatest, but you know, just saying. For nothing. No, for a lot of something. 91 somethings. That's a lot of something. As some things go, that's a lot. For nothing. If I something. If my plane flies over a blue state. That evening, I get a subpoena to report to a federal grand jury. He almost said true just then. The reason he almost said true just then is because he's so used to lying. It's a habit. He, he almost went true. Caught himself. We, we've seen him do this a bunch of times. He does true. It's a true thing. True. When he reads something that um, that he either believes he's, or whatever he's selling. Mm -hmm. Al Capone would have dinner with somebody if he didn't like the look. Or All right. This is from him seeing the untouchables in the, was it the 80s or the 90s? When did untouchables come out? Fuck. Chad, do you remember when the untouchables came out? Was it 91? Somewhere, yeah, late 80s, early 90s. Yeah, it was like, I want to say it was 91, 92. Somebody in the chat will know. Okay. Um, this, this asshole is essentially saying, um, that 87. Thank you guys. 87. Yeah. It, it seemed like it was later than that or whatever, maybe because I watched it on cable a bunch of times, but Trump clearly saw untouchables, saw the scene where Al Capone bashes the guy's head in with a bat and totally misunderstood that the guy was a, a rat and was not living up. He was not, you know, he's either t stealing part of his cut or whatever the fuck, but it was, it was a true betrayal that he killed the guy where he's walking around, Ty Cobb and so on, and he whacks the guy with the fucking bat. Trump saw that and thought, he didn't understand the plot of the movie and just thought that Capone killed the guy because he didn't like his face. Because he wasn't paying attention. Shark Week, he'll pay attention. That scares the shit out of him. This one, he's like, I got it, I got it. And he was probably trying to, you know, skeeve a handy from a friend of Jeffrey Epstein's, but so at, at that time, so... <laughs> At that point, he, he missed a lot of plot points. Face, he'd kill them. He never gets indicted. No, no. What they're doing is very dangerous for our country. You see it. You see the support I have. Look, this never happened before. When somebody goes through this kind of stuff, they immediately go to the microphone. And they say, I will be leaving office now. I will be home. Yeah, but those are people with, you know, dignity, some sense of just they they want to be a part of normal society they they care or that they actually want to spend time with their family i'm going home and love my family and share really that's a, that's a, go home and love my family and cherish them
family and fight for my name. And that's the last you ever see of this poor person. With me, I get indicted and my numbers go up. What the hell is going on? Because the people know it's a scam. They understand it. They know we're being scammed. He looks happy. It's so true. They want to silence you, demoralize you. and They want to silence you. That's why you're meeting here at the Christian Radio Broadcasters Association. Sorry, that's mine. That's mine. That's okay. mine. Wait, I beg your pardon. Hi, Jake. It's so nice. It's always nice to see you, man. It's just, just, you too, Chad. But, you know, I, don't, I get to see you more often. Yeah, yeah. I'm working. I am working. Watch, watch. Like and subscribe. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. Smash that like. You tell them, Chad. Smash that Get fucking. Ready. That's Get right. Send, yeah. Uh, support tip the show. Pa Patreon.com slash Al Sparks. I don't have the tip jar up on this one. I normally do. But on this, I'm, I'm worried about crashing the fucking laptop. So I haven't. It's pretty bare bones. Although I am broadcasting from space, if you noticed. I didn't. I, I created a space station. I don't see. I just see. It's green screen. Yeah. It's, uh, the, it's, the, it's the Hollywood is the world of illusion. <laughs> Sorry, guys. All right. I'm back. You out of politics, stay the hell out of politics. If I wasn't running, you'd already be in jail. And if I wasn't leading by a lot, you see the polls today, I'm up by 12 points and four. No, he's, he's, he's losing by four. Over crooked Joe Biden. And in a national poll, I'm up by 91 points on, on, I won't use the term because it's, some people think it's a little bit nasty, but. Some people you don't like very much. Uh, Haley. Haley. Oh, he didn't remember her first name. Up 91 points. That's a lot. <laughs> and it yeah, it's almost as if every r real Republican in the party has left. They've just fucked off. South Carolina, Nikki Haley is losing to me. It looks like she's going to lose by 25 or 30 points. That's a lot. She's governor, but people don't like her too much. And Yeah, but <coughs> if you, uh, you get indicted and you're actually going to do jail time, a lot of those voters are just going to hop straight from your camp to hers or hop back in and vote for her at the convention. So it's worth their while to stick around. She's hurting the party, but I don't care. Let her run because think of it. If she's not running, they're not talking about us. So maybe it's better if she runs a little bit, but she's not doing well. Free press. That's what that's what he thinks it is. We can't let it happen. You know, it's uh, we have to stick together as a party. We have enough enough of a fight on whether you call it the radical left or the communists or the fascists or whatever you want to call them. That's the. Um, God, what do, what do I want to call them? I've got to, you know, I mean, I know what you mean by that, but I, can I get, can I just go with like normal people? Okay. Fight and we have to save our country, but Christians, they can't afford to sit on the sidelines in this fight. They have to really get out there. They have to do what they have to do and they have to win. <laughs> You gotta do the corrupt what you gotta do when you do what you do, how you do it. Persecution by this regime will not stop with me. Oh, it's not going to stop with me. I mean, kind of is going to stop with you. I mean, they're not. Nobody else has been threatened with indictment, even Ron DeSantis, you know, like. And, and you know, and Rhonda deserves it. They gave me a fine of three hundred and fifty five million dollars for doing nothing wrong. This was a. Fine, like never seen before. And you know the amazing... Tell that to Alex Jones. <laughs> the Republic, this, the people in this mm. country, they understood it immediately. Yes, they're like, oh yeah, I, I thought it was going to be more. It's all a big hoax. If I wasn't running, I wouldn't have been sued. None of these indictments would happen. And if I wasn't, once I started winning, I... Well, I, I, here's, I, I will put a little asterisk next to that. If Jan 6th hadn't happened and he wasn't running, there's a chance that he might have been able to punt these things forever in New York and other places. For real. Um, but the but when Jan 6th happened, that's when the, the kid gloves came off and everybody was like, all right, fuck this dude. To my wife, I said, our great first lady who sends her regards, she loves... She does, she sends her regards. 
Tell them um, th that I said fuck Christmas. I'm kidding. Anybody in this room? Tell the Christmas I'm I take it back. And and if they need, we've got plenty of those blood red stalagmite Christmas trees sitting around. They're all in the garage. If you want, we can deliver them to your house. I'll have twelve people in black robes bring them over. But I said, when I saw these numbers, we were way ahead. I said, oh, this is going to be painful. I'm going to probably get another 12 indictments in the next week or two. <laughs> Although they're backfiring, I know I heard in one case they were getting ready to do it, and they got a call from Washington, don't do it. We're going to indict this guy into office. <laughs> but they're bad people. The chains are already tightening around all of us. I mean, if you The chains are already tightening around all of us. Ooh. Well, promises, promises. Think about it. Ultimately, the radical left is coming after all of us because they know that our allegiance is not to them. Our allegiance is to our country and our allegiance is to our creator. They don't want to hear that. Our, 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 like, okay, you're talking to a group of Christian broadcasters. Almighty God, that's what you're supposed to say. Our allegiance is to Almighty God, not our, our, our. And our creator for shit, for all they know, you mean Roy Cohn. They don't want to hear that. How any... Right? I've... ...can vote for a Democrat, Christian or person of faith. Any faith whatsoever. If you, if you, if you like the George Michael song, I don't even get it. Person of faith, how you can vote for a Democrat is crazy. It's crazy. It's crazy. It's crazy. It's crazy. I, if, you know what? If I knew what people of faith were actually like, um, they've got to stop. They've got to stop. But these Christians have got to stop voting for anybody but a pussy grabbing second generation rich kid from New York who, who makes fun of elites while living in a gold laminated apartment that's three times smaller than he says it is. Kind of like his hands in his dick. Because uh, it's hard, you know, we have to, we have to really go out and, on November 5th and we have to get votes like nobody ever got before because... Uh, uh, you, you, I thought you did. Always cheap. Oh, uh, thank you, Edward. Appreciate that. We, we have some great... Salute, Edward. Um, yes, I did forget rapist. That is true. I, uh, adjudicated rapist, as we like to say. Safeguards, a lot of things. The last time... Well, we won one that we weren't supposed to win. They went crazy. And they decided to do things that they shouldn't be doing. And we were... Well, I mean, that sounds like a party. Often I will decide things to, to do things that I shouldn't be doing. Right? Right? Okay. Somewhat unsuspecting. And they did something that really has set back our country tremendously. But we're going to get vote. What are you talking about? The infrastructure bill? We'll tell you, we did phenomenally in 2016, we won. We did much better in 2020. We got millions and millions of more votes, and we got scammed. Scammed. And the enthusiasm was probably the likes of which nobody's ever seen in an election in this country for the both of them. The enthusiasm for this election coming... Yeah, the crowds are smaller, but they're enthusiastic. Did you see the crying lady at the shoe thing? November is far greater than it was in 2016 or 20, 2020. You mean they're 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 more angry? <laughs> far greater. It's not uh -huh. even a contest. I've never seen anything like it. Even coming over here, everybody has a Trump sign. Trump, Trump, Trump. And uh, you know, unfortunately, we're still nine months away. A little more than nine months away. And the sad part is that. Mm. The incompetence of this man and this administration can do tremendous damage in nine months. And it's a long time, you know. It is. It's a, nine months is a long time. You could, um, you could have like sixteen weeks. You could have like four abortions. It sounds like it's short, and it, uh, politically speaking, is pretty short. It's not a long period. But the damage they do is just overwhelming. What they're allowing to happen to our country. For example, what they cannot stand is that in the end, we do not answer to bureaucrats in Washington. We answer to God in heaven. We do. We answer. To we totally do. God in heaven. He's he's up there with my parents 
uh, uh, getting advice from them on what to do with me. God in heaven. It says God in heaven right there in the teleprompter. I mean, I, and they say, I don't know the Bible. So today I come before you as a friend. Ew. And ally and a fellow believer to ask for your help. <laughs> Fucking don't shrug on fellow believer. And fellow, I don't know. I come as a, a friend and ally and a fellow believer. Mm. Listen Watch. to God in heaven. So today I come before you as a friend and an ally and a fellow believer to ask for fellow your help believer. and your support and your prayers for this country. We need your prayers most importantly. And I make you a simple promise. In my first term, I fought for Christians harder than any president has ever done before. You know that. You know that. Um, <clears throat> well, I mean, harder than any president who was only fighting for a specific de like, uh, denomination of Christianity and also not being one himself by, you know, acting like one, you know, which I think is the best way to fight for it. But And I will fight even harder for Christians with... With pussy-grabbing tendencies and... Oh, sorry. More years in the White House. We did things that uh, the likes of which nobody has ever done for. You mean the volume of golf or? Rat farts! ...in this country, and I'm very proud of that and honored by it. Ivermectin, we've got you covered. They're running. Uh, okay. Ads for Ivermectin while you're doing it. Yeah. I've tried fruit pectin. It works better. Just think of what, with God's help, we already achieved. My, is my green screen in the way? So you can slide it forward. Go ahead. Look out. Oh, no, no, no. Doesn't change a thing. It's It probably makes it slightly better, I got to be honest. Yeah, you did. Uh, he's running ivermectin ads during his speech on RSBN. They're running literally like I, like ivermectin packets. Just got malaria. Yeah, exactly. Historic. Well, ivermectin, you know, is good if you have uh, worms. And most of the people that were, you know, benefited, I don't have to tell you guys, if you took ivermectin when you had COVID and you felt better, the reason you felt better is because you had worms and didn't know it. Oh, really? Yep. Yeah, a bunch because you're, because uh, COVID makes your immune system overreact, like a lot of, you know, and that's what fills up your lungs with gunk and makes your, it gets you that fibrous uh, lung tissue and all that kind of shit. Uh, one of the reasons is your immune system overreacting. One of the things that makes your immune system overreact is parasites. So people with parasites already were in more danger. So some of the people that were like, I took ivermectin and it made me feel better. because it lowered their immune system's fight with the worms they had. And so they were able to fight off the infection like a normal person who got it and didn't have to go to the hospital. So Joe Rogan basically had worms is what I'm saying. He got you no worms. fucking way he didn't, have, he didn't have worms. With his fucking ayahuasca trips to South America and him drinking muddy water to, and all that shit. Yeah. That, there I said it. Allegedly, Joe Rogan has worms. I said it. <laughs> You're going to catch a ton of shit. I don't care. I don't give a fuck. But that's I'm dead serious. One of the reasons why some people felt better after they took ivermectin is because they had worms and didn't know it. Wow. They'd kill, they had parasites. That's crazy. That's yeah. Crazy. Yeah, yeah. First term, just a few of the things under my leadership and working with you and a lot of the great people. Little side conversations that we have on the show sometimes, you know, this, this, is, this is why I don't have a live audience because this is, we'd have breakout groups and I'd never finish the show. In the room, Jack, thank you very much, by the way. You see you sitting there. Everyone knows who I'm talking about. Thank you. No, they don't. No one knows. I think he means Jack Persobic, but I don't think he can think of his last name. That's why he always says it. With you and a lot of the great people in the room. Jack, thank you very much, by the way. You see you sitting there? You see you sitting there. Yes. Yes, as a matter of fact, I, I can always see myself in third person wherever I am, you crazy fuck. Um, it's Jack Prasovic. And, and the reason he's saying, Jack, you see you sitting there and everybody knows who I'm talking about is because he can't remember Prasovic. Everyone knows who I'm talking about. Thank you very much. Great job. And so many others. Under my leadership, we did more to uphold religious freedom than any administration in history, and everybody agrees. So no, they don't. Okay, uh, that that claim, by the way, comes from him uh, fighting to keep churches open while COVID was killing old people. That's the fight he was talking about. But I guess you were right, weren't you? Huh? We fearlessly protected the conscience. 
rights, doctors, nurses, teachers, and faith groups like the Little Sisters of the Poor. We fought very hard alongside of them. And we had some incredible results. I blocked the IRS from using the Johnson Amendment to interfere with pastors' freedom of speech. While still letting them live tax-free. And Joe Biden. You, most of you have an extra airplane because of that. He's trying to take it back. He's trying. If he's trying to take it back, why didn't he just do it? It's already the law. It, you, you only change it through an executive order. If he wanted to fix it, or if you actually did something to change it, then he would clearly, he could clearly change. Oh, you didn't. Uh, uh, oh, nothing like that actually happened in any major way. It was just kind of a, it was just lip service. Ah. Take it away. They used that. I'll never forget. I was in New York in Trump Tower. It was. Sir. 2015, I had probably 45 pastors, some rabbis. And yeah, sorry about that. Uh, but we had people of faith. and No priests, so interesting. Maybe it's a Catholic thing. Maybe they were already being wiped out then. Teachers of faith and very people I want to hear from. And I said, I'd love to have your endorsement. And they looked a little bit like bewildered. Because I didn't know what the hell. I never ran for office before. Now I'm running for president. I'm leading. And I say, I want to have your endorsement. And they said, no, I don't. Uh, we just can't do that. I, I'm wondering because they had come up two or three times. We got along great. We Was it the Access Hollywood tape, maybe? Maybe that's why the, the whole pussy grabbing thing put them off? Maybe that's why the rabbis and pastors didn't want to? That never occurred to you? Maybe it was the shit about you, if, you, if Ivanka wasn't your daughter, you'd be fucking her. Or uh, wishing that Tiffany had uh, your wife's tits on television and saying that you know, when they said, what do you have in common with your daughter? You said you were going to say sex. Maybe that's why the pastors and rabbis didn't want to endorse you the first time around. Maybe then. Maybe that's to that. I Nah, I'm sorry. Agreed on just about everything. I was just saying, if I was a pastor, that would give me a slight pause. That would have been the thing. I'd be like, I saw you on the fucking view or talking to Joy Behar and you were talking about wanting to fuck your daughter. And I was like. We have enough of that in the South already. But when I said, uh, I'd love to have your endorsement, uh, <coughs> the room went sort of silent. And Maybe they were praying. Maybe you don't recognize it. So, you know, you know. I called one of them over and I said, what's wrong? I don't understand. Why wouldn't you endorse me? I mean, the person you're talking about, and you could go either way, whether it's Biden or Hillary Clinton. I don't use the word crooked for I took that word away from her and I put it now on Biden. I call her now. I call her now beautiful Hillary. She's a beautiful woman. <laughs> but I said, why aren't they endorsing me? I'm so much better. I mean, I don't want to brag, but I am so much for what you are all about and what you. Yeah, I'm for what you are all about, you know. G the God thing. That is the most important thing. They said, sir, we're not allowed to. We have a thing called the Johnson Amendment. I never heard of that. I said, what is it? Well, if we openly support somebody uh, politically we could lose everything uh, they'll take away no it's just you, you lose your tax exempt status yeah, they, we have a tax exempt status that right <clears throat> because you don't pay taxes because you don't fuck around in the politics of man and that separation protects both sides that away, churches will be devastated, will be devastated. Kenneth Copeland will have to sell his airplane. Uh, where the fuck are we going to get the money to fly our hookers to to the Caymans? I said, I never knew that. This was... <laughs> well, if you went to church in New York, you would. Johnson, very powerful president, actually. Powerful guy. They knew how to get... Big dick, apparently. <laughs> That's what he means. Anybody know the, like, the Vietnam... Uh, strategy question like there was a I guess a female reporter was asking Johnson like what's your strategy and to to get out of Vietnam, and he whipped his dick out and said this is my strategy. It was done and he had a problem with I guess they say a pastor in Houston or Dallas. Yeah, one or the other, Texas problem, and he did El Paso. He put this maybe it was New Mexico, maybe. I mean, why you're making it up? What? Pluto. I'm going to go with Pluto. Terrible rule into effect, and it was a very strong rule. And mm -hmm. I said, so, and we were on the 68th floor of Trump Tower, and we're looking down on Fifth Avenue. I said, so that I said, so that means if I was Putin, I could just push you. That any person down there 
has equal power to you people, and you're the people that everybody wants to listen to. No. Me, what he, I think what he's trying to say is everybody down there has more power than you because they can say whatever they want and you can't. No, the, the, yeah, but they they pay taxes. Everybody else down there. You're not allowed to back that up because you need some political strength. They said, essentially, that's right. We can't really do anything because we'll lose tax exempt status and other things. And I said, that's too bad. I said, if I get in, we are going to totally void out the Johnson Amendment. And I was able to do that. We voided it out. And uh, you were able to speak because you're the people that I want to hear from and that other people want to hear from. And you're not allowed to speak. No, you're allowed to speak all you want. You're not allowed to endorse a particular co- uh, um, uh, candidate. That's it. You can talk all about the other party. You can talk about the issues themselves. You can talk everything. But you can't directly endorse someone because of your tax exempt status. You don't pay taxes. Therefore, you have no say in the fucking federal government. You can vote as a human being but you don't have the right to direct other people. And you should be allowed, if you see somebody that believes in Christianity, if you see- Yeah. Doesn't everyone believe in Christianity? I mean, they actually, you know it exists, right? It's, it's a thing. I've, I've seen the word written down. I believe there's a thing called Christianity. Somebody that loves evangelicals or Israel, which has become more and more prominent in your thoughts and your prayers. You should be able to vote and and to promote the person that's uh, backing the ideas that you love and cherish and are very important. So I thought it was the most ridiculous thing. Anyway, we got rid of it and people took a much more active stance and that's great. And And you lost. Weird. To do it again and we're going to get it out now permanently. We're going to get it out now permanently. It was lip service bullshit. We were putting it in the... No, they're not. But we had tremendous bite back on that. But for bite back? For years, we went through uh, a great period. You were able to speak. And we're going to make that on a permanent basis. You're going to uh-huh. be able to do it because you're the people we want to hear from, the pastors and the ministers and the rabbis. The people in this room are the people we want to hear from. Priests? You're just leaving out priests? I mean, what is going on with Catholics? Where are they? What happened to them? They have to have a political voice. You know, if you think about it, I do. You have men. Uh huh. You have women. That's true. You have religion. If that's right. Yeah. What more could you ask for? You have men. You have women. You have religion. What? What? Um, are the people? Uh, I don't. I don't know where the fuck this is going. I can't wait. I'm so excited. What? We want to hear from, and they have to have a political voice. You know, and yes, I do believe he said pastures once instead of pastors, but whatever. Think about it. Uh huh. You have men. Uh huh. You have women. Sure. And you have religion. Yeah. If you look at it. Uh huh. You have more than the men. You have more than the women. You have such power, but you really you weren't allowed to use that power. What? <laughs> Wait. What? What? No. If I think about what well, I'm still thinking about it. What the shit are you talking about? Run that by me again, asshole. As the people in this room are the people we want to hear from, and they yeah. have to have a political voice. Sure. You know, if you think about it. Okay, if I'm I'm trying, I'm really trying. I'm going to think about it. Let's think about it. Here we go. We're going to think about this, whatever the, let's think about it. Okay. You have men. Right. Yep. We got men. Okay. I know that. I am one. I'm good with that. Let's hear it. I'm a man. Understood. Then what? You have women? Yes, there are women also. Yep. It's in the Bible even. I think one of them, you know, something with a rib. I don't know. I wasn't really paying attention. I had a crush on um, Tammy Lilly and she was in uh, my Sunday school class and stuff like that. So I kind of, I got to say, I glazed over some of them the first time I was learning that shit, really. But I got the whole man and woman thing, you know. And you have religion. Sure. Religion in general. Just all of them. Christianity, Islam, Judaism, Wicca, the Norse mythologies, uh, uh, Hinduism, uh, yes, Buddhism, which is not really a religion. It's a sort of a s- system of spiritual hygiene, really, if you think about it. But uh, I get you. So, <clears throat> yeah. Um, what? Look at it. Uh-huh. 
You have more than the men. You have more than the women. Yes. You have uh, trans people as well. Or is that not, is that what you were talking about? You have such power, but you really, you weren't allowed to use that power. And you're now allowed to use it. I get in there. You're going to be using that power at a level that you've never used it before. <laughs> what? Like a, they're going to have magic powers or whatever? You're going to pull that sword from that stone. You're going to hold up the eyepiece to the staff of Ra, and it's going to make a light beam. There's going to show you, and you're going to be digging in the wrong place. I am the monarch of the sea. I am the ruler of the... It's going to bring back the churchgoer. I mean, you have to see. I don't like the charts when I see charts where they're going in the wrong direction. We don't like that. We're gonna... No, you're going to bring back the churchgoer and make a hand signal that's very awkward? Back, and I really believe it's the biggest thing missing from this country. Uh -huh. It's the biggest thing missing. We have to bring back our religion. We have to bring back Christianity in this country. <clears throat> okay. It, it, is it weird that while he's talking about bringing back Christianity in this country, when he doesn't go to church in front of a bunch of Christian broadcasters, there's an ad running for a uh, Birch Gold Group right next to him? I, I, are you going to propose the Render Unto Caesar Act um, once you get back in office? Got to do it. Got to get a lot of Christians back in this country. People are starting to think for themselves. We got to have you guys doing the thinking for them. We can't have them. We can't have them doing their own thinking. There's too much of that going on. We got to get back, people back in the church where you can tell them who to vote for, and I'll make it legal so that you can do it. So they vote for me because I fucking lost last time. It's a rigged system. The devil is rigging it. I've heard devil. I hear the word devil. You hear devil all the time. Devil shouting. People are shouting at the devil. Yeah, people are uh, saying to hell with the devil. I don't know which way we're supposed to go. Striper. It, Motley Crue. Was it a rivalry? We don't know. <laughs> Hey, who did? Oh, yes, he did. That's true. Yeah, yeah. I thought you were saying Michael Sweet. I was like, how dare you? Thank you. To hell with the devil. All right. Devil. Thank you very much. I issued guidance to making clear that the right of freedom to worship does not. To forceps? To the right of freedom to have forceps. The forces, forces. I issued guidance on the freedoms of forces. Thank you very much. Yes, I, thank you very much as well. Issued guidance making clear that the right of freedom to worship does not to for, to foreskin freedom to foreskin freedom of your foreskin. At the door at a public school, and I supported school prayer. Very important school prayer, which we forced. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I'm just saying from a founding father's standpoint, forced prayer is not kind of the direction you want to go. I, right. Uh, they didn't. All right. Unfortunately had to force into. Yeah. Unfortunately had to force people to pray because they just won't do it. And then you don't even really know if they're doing it. So you got to squeeze their nipple harder and you got to start twisting. Are you really praying right now? Yes, 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 yes. Some schools, it should be very easy. You would think it would be very easy, but it won't. Yeah, some schools, a lot of kids are praying. I hope I don't fail this test. I hope she's not pregnant. I hope they don't fail this test. Yeah. But we did it. I was the first and only president to convene a meeting of the United Nations to end religious persecution worldwide. First time they've ever done it. Uh, they were And it worked. There's none left. Nowhere. It all ended on that day. It was a lovely little gathering. And uh, I know what you're thinking. Um, that was that was the meeting where the decision to, you know, give uh, recognize the Golan Heights in Israel and to move the capital to Jerusalem and to uh, move the embassy there, which triggered the the Hamas rejection of um, a peace deal and a two-state solution. But, what you know, whatever. Anyways. Thrilled, but that was okay. They did it. I signed an executive order to install faith advisors in every federal department and agency so that your voice and the Christian worldview would be heard in the halls of power in Washington. What? Get the... Oh, I love you. Love you. You're amazing. Bye, everybody. Bye, Tig. See you later. Have a great show, guys. Yeah. Cheers. City Peace. City. Peace. Peace. Yep. Peace and be wild. <laughs> uh...
What the fuck is he talking about right here? He didn't have fucking, like, Christian training wheels in every department. What the? No. Get the shit out of here. All faith advisors in every federal department and agency so that your voice and the Christian worldview would be heard in the halls of... What a bunch of big government anti-American horseshit. Fuck are you talking about? Or in Washington and all over the world is a very big deal. <laughs> very proud of it. Wasn't that easy to do, you know that? Four years, we totally... I, I, this is the first time hearing of it, and it sounds like bullshit. ...formed the federal bench, appointing nearly 300 federal judges to interpret the law and the Constitution has written a record. 300. I withstood vicious attack. Yeah, I think actually Biden's going to beat your record, but anyways, continue. Pick and confirm three great Supreme Court justices... Who, you know, got rid of Roe v. Wade, which you guys will like, but... Didn't do anything to help you with that whole rigged election bullshit, did they? The great, great justices, great people. They're great people. Neil Gorsuch, Brett Kavanaugh, Amy Coney, Barrett. We, nobody thought that was going to even be possible. We fought. This was not, this was not an easy thing to do. From my first day in office, you I... You mean because they were completely unqualified and he had weird debts and she, everybody knew she was lying about... Roe being settled law. That was that why it wasn't easy. Historic action to protect the unborn, like nobody has ever done. Nobody has ever done it. Well, certainly not since Deuteronomy, I guess. Thank you. Which is officially the last time in the Bible that life is precious. I reinstated and expanded the Mexico City policy, uh, Ronald Reagan. Didn't do it. Nobody did it. Nobody did it like us and was the first president ever to attend the March for Life rally in Washington, D.C. It was a great honor. And I was there. He gave a speech to it. You didn't walk with him, fuckhead. To bring this issue. Yeah, I don't know what the Mexico City policy is. Wait, hold on one second. <laughs> huh. A uh, name for Mexico City, the venue, UN International Conference on Population Development, where it was announced the policy was instituted by U.S. for the regular, the final language of the 84 policy. Mexico is referred to as critic as the global gag rule is a former uh, block U.S. federal funds for non-governmental organizations. Oh, I see. Um, to get them to not be able to promote um, the Mexico City policy uh, was uh, them trying to stop people from uh, helping with ha family planning in developing countries, giving them uh, contraceptives or, uh, or performing abortions, especially for rape victims in refugee camps and the like. The Mexico City policy was um, a Reagan era thing where he uh, was, um, I knew it sounded familiar or whatever, but it, the idea was it, um, yeah, it's been rescinded and reinstated by subsequent administrations along party lines and has been in effect for 21 of the past 36 years. Um, Reagan did, Reagan is actually the person who started it. Um, Biden rescinded it in uh, on January 28th, making the end of four-year uh, period under Trump that saw the greatest expansion of the policy in its history. Um, the program part of PEPFAR, maternal and child health, malaria, nutrition, and other U.S. programs potentially encompass $7.3 billion in fiscal year 2020 alone. To the extent that such funding was uh, ultimately provided to foreign NGOs directly or indirectly, fam family planning assistance accounted for approximately $600 million of that total. The Trump administration also moved to further tighten restrictions reaching other areas of U.S. development assistance beyond global health and other non-U.S. funding streams. When in effect, it, it requires foreign NGOs to certify that they will not perform or actively promote abortion as a method of family planning using funds, funds from any source uh, from the U.S., or including non-U.S. funds, as a condition of receiving U.S. global family planning. So we won't give money to these NGOs if they get money to pay for the abortions from somebody else. If they even suggest it as a possibility, by the way, to rape victims in refugee camps for fuck's sake. Where, you know, in, in certain areas in Africa where they're trying to literally rape people out of existence. <clears throat> um, yeah, that's that's what he's talking about. Like a jackass. 
for the first time in 54 years back to the states where everybody agrees on both sides. Everybody agrees that's where it should be, back in the states. No. It's so important. No, they everybody don't. Everybody on both sides. No, not everybody on both sides. No. Women in this country should not have to decide um, which state they can live in or can move to based on state rights about their bodies when men don't. Women are, it shouldn't be second class citizens. We're like, well, my husband got a job in Texas, but we can't take the job because if I go there and I need to have an abortion, I won't be able to get one or they will track my movements to make sure I don't fly out of the state to go and throw me in fucking jail. Or if our daughter gets sexually assaulted, she won't be able to have one. Even if it's right away, they won't give her access to RU-46 or the morning after pill or any of that shit. So we can't move to Texas. It should be a federal right. That's the point. And they are the radicals. Remember this. They try and paint a picture of disinformation, misinformation. And I think those are two different things, but I'm not sure. It's the same, but actually not quite. But we won't go into that. Because you can't. Don't tell me you, you're, you could explain it, but you don't have time. You can't explain it. Disinformation's on purpose. Misinformation's an accident. Disinformation, also, it, it, its purpose is to lead to misinformation, making the gullible people pass on disinformation as misinformation. Misinformed versus disinformed. Disinformation. And they try and paint a picture because they're willing to kill the unborn in the sixth and seventh and eighth and ninth months and even after birth. I mean, no. No. Fuck you. That's just murder. Nobody thinks that. Not at all. Why don't you tell them what you really want? <coughs> Lately, Trump has apparently been talking about a 16-week uh, limit. And, and he likes it because it's four months. It's a round number. That's what he said. He likes, it, he likes a nice round number. He doesn't like odd numbers because it sounds evil. And, and so it's 16 weeks. If he said 16 weeks in front of this group of fucking people, uh, they would uh, all get up and walk out. Even after birth, you remember? No, nobody's going to fucking kill a baby after it's born. You just can't keep a baby with its heart outside of its body alive for very long. Governor that but you made them carry it to term. Infant mortality uh, statistics are up now after these, this ruling in Texas because women are having to carry unviable fetuses to term and then watch them die. The, the fetus, which they could have had an abortion to protect themselves and their ability to have a child later and so that the child doesn't just suffer outside the womb while it gasps for air because it can survive inside the womb temporarily. But the minute it has to live on its own, it will die painfully. They just got to sit there and watch it die. And then they have to make a decision with the doctor. Do we give it morphine so it doesn't feel anything while it dies? Or do we just let it die the way God intended? Former governor of Virginia that said the baby will be born and we will decide to kill the baby after birth. We will. Yeah, that's not at all what he said. They have to decide what to do after the baby is born and it's not viable. You have to decide how many times to try and re resuscitate the child as its heart fails. What are you willing to go through for this child that is not going to live? Hours. A decision with the mother. This is the first time I heard that, but there is legislation in some states where thank you, Peter, you for actually the, have the right to do that. Uh, thank you, Peter, for the super chat, by the way. So they, no, no, there are no, there's no states where you have the right to just decide to kill a baby after it's born. Not a single one. You're out of your fucking mind. There's not a single state where you can kill a baby after it's born. The question is, how long do you keep trying to keep it alive when it's just dying? It, it, this is why they went after the whole Terry Schiavo thing so much. Radicals, you're not the radicals. We're not the radicals. They you're an idiot. You don't know what the fuck you're talking about. That's the part that drives me crazy. Hold on one second. I'm going to stretch this out a little bit. Radicals, and you have to say that. Politicians have to say that. Yeah, I have to say radical. Just say they're the radicals. No, I'm not the radical. You're the radical. He's the I'm rubber ball, you're glue defense. It's very, it's it's the perfect mature defense when talking about a serious issue like abortion. Because no And rape and incest. He believes that after a certain period of time, nobody believes that you should be doing this. It's like 97% agree. 
Right. 97% of people believe that there should be a limit on the time that you can, uh, you can abort a viable fetus. We're not talking about that. We're talking about non-viable fetuses in this particular instance. And, uh, and as early as fucking possible. But the thing is, with them wanting to get rid of contraceptives, that, uh, that's what extends this whole thing even further. What they want women to do is be tied to the fucking kitchen. We also have to remember that we have to have people elected. So some things that uh, you feel and you have to go with your heart, you have to stay with that. You have to stay with your heart, but you have to get elected. You have to get people elected. Okay, that was uh, gibberish. That has to do with his, like, you can't say a total ban because you'll never get elected. So you have to get elected, and then once you get in there, do whatever the fuck you want. Wink, wink. What a difference a president Thanks, Brian. makes. You saw that during <coughs> my term. What a difference a president makes. So, so big. Bigger than anything else. As I mentioned earlier, under crooked Joe Biden, pro-lifers are now being hunted down by the Biden regime as enemies. And aborted. No, sorry. Of the state. Can you believe that? The no, I cannot. They are not being hunted down as enemies of the state. Biden DOJ that dropped charges against Antifa, where they kill people, where they destroy cities. Take a look at Portland. Yeah, rip Portland. Hashtag rip Portland. Has anybody checked on Tara? Is she smoldering still? You can't even walk down the street. It's you can't. You can't. You cannot walk down the street. Unless you're wearing sandals or something like that. Just, they don't even have storefronts anymore. They used Nope, there's no stores in Portland at all. Mm -mm. Fours, because if they put up a piece of glass to show their wares, it gets knocked out. Well, most of the stores are empty. So hey, hey, matter. hey, I'm but showing my wares. What are you guys doing? You fucking balaclava wearing white kids from the suburbs? cosplaying as revolutionaries i'm trying to show my wares this is all recycled hair i make these are the, these are lint trap uh sweaters they're the softest warmest thing you'll ever wear they're a little itchy i'll give you that they're a little itchy but if you break the window they blow away they're very light what are you doing take a look at what they did there take a look at what happened in Seattle where they took over a big portion of the city. They literally took it. If I wasn't going to... Yeah, who was president when that happened? Anybody remember? I don't remember. You guys remember who was president? Because it's... I mean, I mean, Biden's in charge right now. You'd think if he was, you know, he's supposedly for it. He's a Democrat and a Marxist and a communist and a socialist and a something or other. That, uh, you know, obviously he would support it. If they, I guess if the chop or the Chad wanted to... Uh, Chaz wanted to try again, obviously they'd have the backing of the U.S. government. Wouldn't they? In the troops, we were sending in the troops the next day. All of a sudden, they decided to leave. But the governor didn't want to do it. The governor didn't want to do it. And uh, would yeah, they apparently didn't need it because everybody just left. Also, the reason they left is because the people, the lovely, lovely, quote unquote, Antifa people of the Chad, the the chop, the Chaz, the what have you, uh, those folks uh, killed two black teenagers and then tore apart the car they were in to hide the evidence that they were murdered by the security forces of the of of Occupy downtown Seattle you know because cops are bad to show everybody how police brutality in fucking Seattle was apparently a problem they took over a section of the city and murdered two black kids. Never done. They'd still be there if I didn't do what I did. You take a look. No, no, they wouldn't. You didn't do anything, and they left anyways. That was the point. That was the point you just fucking made. They left on their own. Minnesota, Minneapolis. Thank you, Michael. Yes, fill my tip jar on a on a lovely. Evening. Good evening. How are you? Um, I don't, let's see. Hold on. I think, I don't even know if I have, let's see, browser services. Do, is the, I don't even know if the tip jar is in there. Nope. Son of a bitch. You just have to super chat me and I'll have to trust you. <laughs> we don't have a space tip jar. I need a space tip jar.
But uh, I, but I have a little share graphic. That's cute. I need to make my green screen go further, though. Yeah. Okay, here we go. Also, we're on Instagram, I think, aren't we? Instagram, are we? On? We're live on Instagram. Yeah, there we are. <clears throat> you take a look at what they were doing with that. If I didn't send in the National Guard. He didn't send in the National Guard. Governor didn't want it. And if I didn't send it, you wouldn't have... You wouldn't have that city anymore. Seattle, the one you can't remember, the city you just said, but you want to say Portland, but it's really Seattle, and you can't remember if you just said Seattle or Portland, so you say that city. Ah, uh, Tobias, thank With you. With the CNN announcer saying, this is a nonviolent protest, and behind him, the entire city was burning. MSNBC, that was Ali Belshi, and he was in Minneapolis. The ground, do you remember this? This is... Yes, I do. Violent in every way. I don't see a problem. And he also got hit on the knee with something and he went down. And the city behind him was burning. I never saw anything like it. But they're, you know, they're fake news. What can I say? I think one of the terms, they say, you come up with good names. I said, maybe fake news was the best. If Norm MacDonald used to literally open Weekend Update by going, I'm Norm MacDonald and this is the fake news. It is in the 90s. You know, when I uh, first started, <laughs> fake news. Start, started what? Grabbing women by the pussy? Or, uh... thanks, Michael. When I first started, the press had a very high rating. People actually believed them. You know, you think you read something in the New York Times, it's true. It's usually the opposite. N no, it isn't. And you'll notice that right-wingers, Glenn Beck, Tim Pool, all these assholes, are always citing mainstream media sources, all of them. Isn't that weird? Isn't it weird how they go, they go straight to the, you can't trust the mainstream media as, let me show you this article right here that agrees with me. Well, if it agrees with you, then clearly I can't trust it because you're both full of shit. Uh, the Russia, Russia, Russia hoax, they kept it going, going. It was supposed to be a one day deal. Was it? It was supposed to be one day? I didn't realize we were scheduling our, our Russia, Russia, Russia hoax. It was a way of explaining why Hillary Clinton lost election that a lot of people thought she was going to. Oh, it was, uh. TYT progressives who stayed home and held their nose because she won the popular vote, but she lost 75,000 votes in three states, gave you the electoral college. That's why. And everybody thought she was going to win. So they stayed home and they were like, fuck her. I don't like her neocon. And uh, <clears throat> there were 80% more um, civilian deaths in your first year in office than there were in the entirety of the Obama years as far as drone strikes, because, you know, Hillary's the neocon. That was good. Great strategy, by the way. And am I saying that those people are responsible for those deaths? Yes. Yes, I am. Those people, I guess, thought that I didn't think it because we'd go to rallies for, with 45,000 people and she'd show up and they'd have 25 people show up. I said, why are it's true. Why are we going to win? Well, she got three million more votes because most voters don't go to rallies. But we won that and... Uh... The news just went crazy, and it was supposed to be a one-day event, Russia, 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 and let's get on to running the country, but that went on for two and a half years, and then... Close that whole hiring Manafort thing, and, you know, Mike Flynn, and Carter Page, and George Papadopoulos, and uh, Lev Parnas, and, and uh, Rudy Giuliani, and never mind. Mueller report, and it came in no collusion, but I could have told them that on day one, and they would have known that on day one. That's not what it said. They would have known it because they had the laptop from hell, so they should have known it. Um, technically speaking, there might be something to this whole laptop from hell thing, because uh, even though it wasn't really a laptop, it was a hard drive called laptop. Um, it came from Russia, and Russia kind of sucks. So I'm, Russia's kind of hell. So, regardless of what you might have heard from Tucker Carlson, it, it's kind of ass. So, let, that, that, that saying, you know, yeah, that's it. That was, you have to say, that was truly the laptop from hell, wasn't it? Sir? Yes, Russia is hell, and that hard drive called laptop came from Russia. Miranda Devine wrote a great book on it, and she was very nice. She credited me. She said... I got the name from Donald Trump. I saw him calling it the laptop from hell, and she named her book the laptop from hell. It was. And you didn't get a dime, did you? That bitch. 
Very, very successful. <laughs> I didn't get anything out of it. What I tell you, fucking broke son of a bitch. He can't let anything go. What billionaire acts like this? None. Red. But it was a good book. It was. Can you imagine if they didn't? Can you imagine if he would have gone and picked up the laptop? David, it would have been a whole different country out there for them. But that is, uh, oh, and, and what they have is peanuts compared to what's on that thing. If that were from the other side, if that were a Republican instead of them, uh, the things that are on that are unbelievable. Un really? What, what would those things be? Because the entire thing is available online. And it, uh, clearly, shouldn't they be able to, like, find a crime? Unbelievable. The same Biden DOJ that dropped charges against Antifa has rounded up six pro-life activists right here in Tennessee. All, uh, all six of them? Arresting them for a peaceful protest outside a clinic. It was, it, was, it was peaceful, was it? Where they prayed, sang hymns, and were removed with great force. Really? Why, why did they have to be removed with great force? Were they, they weren't blocking the entrance, were they? They were just praying nearby. Obviously, prayer doesn't, you know, is an extra temporal um, activity. So it, you don't have to be close to anything. You can pray from wherever. Shit, I can pray right now from where I am and affect things very far away. I guess, you know, because they're, you know, uh, you know, faith is beyond um, space time. I'm fucking with you. You have to be right there. It doesn't work. It's topical like ointment. Last month, those protesters Thanks, were Steven. convicted on outrageous charges and are now facing up to 11 years in prison. This is a communist. This is a just just for praying. Yeah, that's all they were charged with praying. Hold on. <clears throat> uh, let's see. Uh, Tennessee abortion activists charged. Mm -hmm. I'm, you know, I'm sure uh, that if we look at this. Honestly, it's just going to be, let's see, is this here? Hold on one second. Oh, yeah. Oh, let's just do the chat one. Here you go. Um, six, what does it say? Six activists convicted of illegally blocking abortion clinic in Tennessee. A Tennessee jury has convicted six anti-abortion protesters of violating federal laws after they blocked the entrance of a reproductive clinic outside of Nashville nearly three years ago. Tennessee jury's convicted them of this. Uh, da, da, da. The jury's decision handed out late Tuesday after a week-long trial marks the latest development in a case that has been closely watched by conservative groups who have accused the federal government of unfairly targeting abortion opponents while who are just there to unfairly target women trying to live within their rights. Mm. Um, let's see. At issue a, is a 2021 blockade held outside a reproductive health clinic in Mount Juliet, Tennessee, a town 17 miles east of Nashville, nearly a year before the U.S. Supreme Court overturned Roe v. Wade. The event was organized by anti-abortion supporters who used social media to promote and live stream actions that they hope would prevent the clinic from performing abortions according to court documents. Prosecutors say participants stationed themselves throughout the office building where uh, CARE-FM health clinic was located, and later several began recording themselves leading a rescue, a term known in... Uh, commonly known among anti-abortion activists as dissuading women from obtaining an abortion. Prosecutors added the videos from that day to show people blocking the clinic's entrances and others attempting to engage with pol police as a delay tactic. Around 20 people attended the blockade. Uh, while a grand jury, look at this dude's outfit. Fabulous. Um, <clears throat> view all 48 images. This, this is terrific, okay? Uh, this guy, photos just to see. Very, very, very farmer equipped with police. Oh, this is just from today. That's not the, that's not to do with this story. I was like, they weren't dressed like that. What are you talking about? While a federal grand jury indicted 11 people who participated in the blockade last year, six were convicted on Tuesday. Those are Chester Gallagher, Paul Vaughn, Hillary Adani, Calvin ba Zastro, Col uh, Coleman Boyd, and Dennis Green. They face up to 10 and a half years of prison time and up to $260,000 fine sentence hearings. These defendants knowingly chose to violate laws they disagreed with. Jury's verdict today is a victory for the rule of law. Yeah, they blocked it. They were blocking. That's the whole fucking point. Just say. Hold on one second. Let go there. It's a little, uh, I was getting a little choppy there for a second. Oh, dear. Just so you understand, this is the beginning of a communist state. No, it isn't. It is not a communist state. In a communist state, they wouldn't let you have abortions unless, I guess, if it was China, you could have an abortion, but only if it's a girl. 
uh, whether it's me or any one of another thousand things that are going on, this is the only way they're going to be able to stay in office, because they're running a regime that's so incompetent, nobody's ever seen anything like it. Everything they do, high interest rates. Nope. The open borders. I don't think the border's not open. And by the way, they they had a you know they had a border bill. Republicans voted against it. Has ever been anything so egregious that we've seen as these open borders, where these millions of people are allowed to just come into our country and invade this country? Biggest round of applause so far from Christian broadcasters is where are all these brown people coming from? By the way, most of whom are Catholics. Vast majority, if, if they have a stated religion and they're coming across the southern border, more than likely Catholic. What's going on with Catholics? You saw that mountain? We built the wall, all of these hundreds of miles of wall. We ended it at that mountain, they said. We ended it at that mountain. Nobody can go over that mountain. And oh, sorry, is my, uh, my laptop overheating? Do I have to, hold on. Yeah, it's, it's getting very warm. It's true. See if I can maybe place something underneath it that would keep it up that won't catch fire. I'm going to try to do this, maybe get a little air underneath it. Wish me luck. Perhaps. Mm hmm. Settle down. Let it go. Is it better now? All right. We put it boom, right into that. What we figured we had at least we had something done that was good. The people are we figured we had something done that was good. Okay. Pouring over, it's sort of known as Steak Mountain, Steak Kill, Snake, it's Snake. Jesus Christ, you've done the snake so many times you can't say Steak, Snake Hill, Snake, snake Steaks. You make, they're, made, they're eating Snake Steaks. Foreigners, they eat weird shit. Um, what, uh, run that by me again, fuckwad. It's what? Of these hundreds of miles of wall, we uh, ended it at that shoom. mountain. They said, nobody can go over that mountain. And we put it boom, right into that What We figured we had at least we had something done that was good. The people are pouring over. It's sort of known as steak mountain, steak kill, snake. It's snake. A lot of snakes. I think they're rattlesnakes. Jesus Christ. Snake kill mountain? Is that what he's trying to say? For fuck's sake, what? Snake, snake. <coughs> All right, and now I got to look this shit up. By the way, can uh, hold on. I've got to reload my chat because for some reason it stopped coming through. And that's when I get nervous and think that the show's gone off the air and then I don't know what's happening. And then I don't know what's happening. And it's very scary. Snake, snake. Snake kill mountain. Hold on. Snake kill mountain. Snake, 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 I don't know what the fuck he's talking about. Uh, snake, kill, order, wall, s more than 10, uh, to, uh, border wall has been absolutely devastating for people and wildlife. Okay according to the Audubon Society, because animals cook when they go and they try to slide across it. Between the rattlesnakes and the rough terrain and the steepness, they said nobody's coming up. The people are coming over by the thousands. No, they aren't. It's crazy. And we let them come over. We let well, if they can go through the snakes and come over the wall or whatever, I, honest to God, I think we need them for the Olympics at the very least. Do it. Our country can withstand. No country can withstand what's happening to us. We have 9 million job openings. If, if we kept everybody that came over the border for the next three years, we still wouldn't be able to fill them all because some of them are kids. They, they wouldn't even be able to work in Arkansas for another three years because they're six. Inundated. They're being overrun. They're taking the parks from children. There are no more baseball fields. No more. Yeah, there's no more baseball. America, they, they, there's all these Venezuelans coming up here eating all of our apple pie. Fucking our moms. <laughs> Mom, apple pie, baseball, they're taking it all. Soccer fields, no more anything. It's, it doesn't sound very serious. Knocker fields and baseball fields are very serious. Not, I guess, I agree. Knocker fields. Do we, can we, <laughs> um, we have knocker fields? 
Can I visit those? Is that wrong? Is that near these big hills you're talking about? They're taking the park. What, what, what kind of fields? From children. There are no more baseball fields. No, no. more soccer fields. No more anything. No. It's, it doesn't sound very serious. Knocker fields and baseball. Yeah, it does not. Knocker fields does not sound very serious. It sounds kind of fun, actually. I, I mean, I don't. I, I, all I can do is picture myself running through it with my arms outstretched with my, my hands drifting. Never mind. It's very serious. Their way of life has changed. And. Mm. They're being treated better than long-time American citizens, and they're being treated better than our soldiers, our veterans are being treated. They're staying in world-class hotels. The whole thing is crazy. What's happening? Oh, okay, no, they're not. In our country, let's call these brave Americans what they most really of, are. Pers the, most of the time he's referencing times when they were staying in these big hotels, it's because they were fucking empty because of COVID. That was when he was president. Jesus Christ. Christians, they're being persecuted. And let's call their imprisoned and imprisonment. They are being. Yes, let's just call them whatever the words are, whatever they are. By the way, all I can think of is trying to motorboat a field right now. That's all. I'm just. Never mind. Americans, what they really are, persecuted Christians. They're being persecuted. Yeah, well, they're being persecuted for being for what? For how are they being persecuted? Or they they're not allowed to go to church or oh they can they can go to church okay they can't pray in the they can pray whenever they want they just can't run a church in a public building because it's for everybody and not just for them hmm I guess uh, it's a form of persecution really if you think about it and let's call their imprisoned and imprisonment they are being imprisoned by Joe Biden and his people evil are they well he's surrounded by very evil people they are. I believe just doing whatever they want to do. I don't believe they have any leadership at all. It's just chaos. Yeah, that's the thing. They're locking up Christians just because it's a thing to do. They're just out of boredom, I think. Joe Biden. This is, by the way, this is fucking blather. <coughs> because of his gross incompetence is a threat to democracy. Big threat to democracy. To reverse these monstrous abuses. Of he was hoping for a applause line, people. What? What's wrong with you? You're supposed to be fucking clapping. Or the moment I win the election, I will appoint a special task force to rapidly review the cases of every political prisoner who has been unjustly victimized by the Biden regime. So Gitmo, you're talking about go looking over people who are in Gitmo still? Is that who you're talking about? Or are you talking about giving aid and comfort to the people that were arrested for attacking the Capitol on January 6th, which, which, which would be um, um, a, a violation of the 14th Amendment, and therefore you wouldn't be allowed to run for office. Never again will the federal government be used to target religious believers. They are targeting religious believers. Uh, you mean like a Muslim ban, like on travelers, people coming from countries that from from a religious standpoint, you do, you disagree with that, that what you're talking about like that? Of course not. They did to all of you. A lot Thanks, of Maynard. ground was lost by religion during COVID, during the China virus. Let's be more accurate. Yeah. Better some ground loss than some fucking parishioners. That was the point. Try to, to, to lose your fucking flock is the problem. China virus. Ground, what, you think people forgot Jesus during COVID? We want to be accurate, have to be accurate, or you'll... Hold on, please. Ground was lost by religion during COVID, during the China virus. Let's be more accurate. It's called the China virus. We want to be accurate, have to be accurate, or you'll get criticized. <laughs> you'll get criticized by the fake news. But Americans of faith... He's really flagging right now, I'd like to say. He's just like, it's getting, it's like he, he's on a wind down. Not a threat to our country. Americans of faith are the soul of our country. They are, they're the soul of our country. Every time the radical left Democrats, Marxists, communists, and fascists indict me, I consider it a great badge of honor. I really do. It's crazy. I, I've got to have it some. Is, it is crazy. I am fucking nuts. A little bit different up there. Different's a good word for it. Wrong, broken, sure. 
I do, because I'm being indicted for you and never forget. Why? What the fuck did they do? These assholes, nobody in this audience kept classified documents in their shitter or defrauded banks by pretending a building they owned had 10 more floors than it actually has. They didn't grab a woman by the, well, some of them might have. Touche. Enemies want to take away my freedom because I will never let them take away your freedom. I'm never what, what freedom? They were on, the, uh, all their broadcasters were on the air yesterday. They'll be on tomorrow. They're at this gathering. All of them hit a Starbucks on their way to this fucking thing. They could say anything the fuck they want. What freedoms are you talking about? It happened. They want to silence me because I will never let them silence you. And in the end... They're not after me. They're after you. If they wanted to silence, if Biden wanted to silence them, wouldn't he have done it already? I mean, what's he waiting for? The second term? I just happened to be standing in the way. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. <laughs> not the easiest thing I've ever done. Building buildings was much easier. You didn't build any buildings. You bought into them. Your father built buildings. Remember, every communist regime throughout history has tried to stamp out the churches just like Every fascist regime has tried to co-op them and control them. And in America, the radical... Isn't that what you're trying to do today? So you're, you're just saying you're more like the fascist. I see. Good. All right. Well, thanks for the clarification. ...is trying to do both at the same time. There's never been anything like this. And they're doing it without any meaning, and they don't even know why they're doing it. And they're, they don't know if they're in charge or who's in charge. And it's all chaos. They're taking over the churches. They're not even sure why, but they're ma And they don't know if they're Marxists or communists or fascists or socialists. It, it's, a, it's just a, it's crazy pants. It's all crazy. It's really dangerous, okay? It's really a bad thing. Yeah, it's a bad, it's bad, it's bad, it's bad. It's very bad. And, uh... You're going to leave this room and you're going to, some will say, oh, I think it's an over-exaggeration and some will say. Thanks, Michael, for trying to get everybody to match on the Super Chats. I appreciate that. That's lovely. They don't have to, but uh, I would say thank you. That's a lovely thing. Um, considering <coughs> I performed sick today <coughs> for you. I'm sick, so you don't have to be. What? Actually, maybe not even up to what it should be as a statement. It's very dangerous out there. They're doing bad things. They want to tear down crosses where they can. And uh, only when they're burning in people's yards, I would like to say, for the record. That's the only, uh, personally, that's the only place I think they should be genuinely torn down. So, you know, but I'm weird that way, you know. Cover them up with social justice flags which nobody even knows what it means. Nobody knows. They don't know what it means. They, want they don't know. They just want to cover the... They, they, it's, it, they want to cover the flag by removing the L, if you know what I'm saying, because that's what they'd rather have. Take off the name George Washington, Abraham Lincoln, Thomas Jefferson, off schools and off monuments. Think of it. They take down statues like it's uh, the my, most magnificent statues you, anyone's ever seen. Yeah, I think it was Robert E. Lee, I think, is really what you're focusing on. And they'd knock them down like they were garbage. Yeah, that's what you do with garbage. You knock it down. That's what I, I mean. That's always been my experience with, with garbage, you know. Or you jam it with a rake like the guy in the burbs. And uh, so bad. But I see where the other day they wanted to take the name George Washington off of school. The other day. One place. Four years ago. Washington. The other day. When you though. lose George The other day. Washington, you've just about to hit the bottom. That means everything comes off the names of buildings. Even the name Trump is going to be off the buildings. Yes, that is true. That is true. But not for the same reason, obviously. There won't be a Trump up there. I can guarantee you that. Me too. Yeah, that's true. Tr that's true. Hey, silver linings. Shit, they're going to take it off your buildings, you dumb motherfucker. Washington can't make it and Lincoln can't make it. I'm going to have a big problem having my name on buildings. But no one will be touching the cross of Christ under the Trump administration, I swear. Well, yeah, because if you touch it, it will burn your skin. I can see. Yeah, that, that makes sense. Yeah, I, you, especially you and Stephen Miller. Like, I think I would, uh, you know, and if, if there's any water nearby that might have been blessed, I would avoid that as well. Because you'll get a, it, it, I heard it can make, like, if you touch a cross, it can make little burns on your fingers. That's never happened to you, though. That will never happen. Never happened. <laughs> wow.
Why do I have to talk to these assholes? I've never seen a man so excited to address a, a group of true believers who support him in everything that he does. I mean, it's just overwhelming, isn't it? The joy, the happiness. That is, that is the face of a winner right now. That is a guy who's like, I'm nailing it. My internal polls don't tell me I'm losing everywhere at all. Thank you. Thank you very much. You're welcome. I'm, I'm good at this. <laughs> We're not going to let that happen. When I return... Yes, I will stop the thing that was never going to happen. And the things that happened... I'm going to say I would have stopped him had I been there when they happened, no matter what they were, including the Civil War, which I could have renegotiated. Uh, we could have kept slavery like 80, 20, 16 weeks of slavery. The White House, I will once again aggressively defend religious liberty just like I had for four years. You had no problems, but we're going to defend it in all. They don't have any problems now, you dumb motherfucker. Forms. We will protect Christians in our schools, in our military, in our government, and in our... Thanks, Maynard. All of those airwaves that your people, that uh, you, Hewitt, and Sebastian, Gorka, and all of the rest of you, I see a lot of you out there, that, that you do such a great job in, in talking about in your broadcasts and in Salem, where the job you do is great. I'm telling you, Salem has really done a fantastic job. I just... Okay, he means the company Salem Broadcasting, not... <clears throat> the place where the witch trials happened. Just to, just to clarify. Also, what? Thank you. You have courage. You have really courage. Cause I Why? I, I, you know what? I don't disagree. I mean, I've been in a lot of AM studios in my life and they stink. Good portion of them. No offense, but a lot of them smell a little funk. There's a lot of, a lot of what I would call morning DJ funk in those places. A lot of old carpet. Some of it's shag. Very 70s. Uh, yeah, the, you know, if it's uh, if it's left leaning, a lot of patchouli smell. Uh, if it's right leaning, it spilled beer and B.O. for the most part, um, but mostly just like damp rot, you know, old coffee, that kind of shit. It's not easy. You have to go. You have to have courage to go to that small office park and do your show for, you know, do ads for Mike Pillow. Congratulations. Congratulations on your and courage. And we will protect God in our public square, which they don't want us to do. I will never allow the big media. We're... Yes. Uh, in in the downtowns, we will save the clock tower and the kid on the hoverboard, and we will make sure Jesus can be down there near the diner uh, across from the old movie house. It's playing whatever. Doing pressure groups to silence you. I would like to say, for the record, WCPT is a very clean studio. It stands out as such. As, as a matter of fact, it's one of the reasons why I have driven from Grand Rapids, Michigan, doing stand-up, all the way to Chicago to do my radio show, and all the way back in a day, because I'm fucking nuts. But also, I'd rather do it in that studio than from the local studio back in the day when I couldn't do it via the internet, uh, because CPT is nice and clean. I will give them that. Censor you. I will... Uh, uh, I will say, though, here in L.A. and up in San Francisco, yeah. a little rough around the room. Yeah. Discriminate against you or in any way tell you what you have to say. They want you to say what they want you, what they want to have you say. <laughs> <laughs> Do they? Uh, thank you, David. Good fucking Lord. They, they want you to have you say what you would have them. They want they say to, what you say. Say you, say me. Say it always. Say, say, say what you want, but don't say what I say you should say. say. <laughs> they want to what? To you, discriminate against you, or in any way tell you what you have to say. They want you to say what they want you, what they want to have you say, and we're not going to let that happen. Yeah. Say. You're going to say as you want, and you... Yes, yeah, say as you want. Believe, and you're going to believe in God. You're going to believe in God because God is here and God is watching. 
you guys, you guys are finally going to believe in God. I know you've been selling belief in God, but you're going to actually have to do it. I'm fucking with you. What? What the fuck is this? Honest to God, what the living shit was this whole exchange? Silence you, censor you, discriminate against you, or in any way tell you what you have to say. They want you to say what they want you, what they want to have you say, and we're not going to let that happen. You're going to say as you want, and you're going to believe, and you're going to believe in God. You're going to believe in God because God is here, and God is watching. <laughs> God is the wind beneath my wings. Uh, God is, and other Bette Midler lyrics. <laughs> God is watching us. Um, God is watching. And, uh, you know, God, uh, religion is a smile on a dog. Uh, Edie Brickell. I don't know how new the Bohemians are now. Everybody ages. Not as bad as me, but. And God probably can't believe what he's seeing. I think Jack, I think he's having a hard time with this one. He's trying to figure, well. Maybe he wasn't, but everyone else is, I can tell you. He probably understands it very well. So you're under the impression that the all-knowing being is confused. And, and, and apparently this, whatever's happening on Earth currently, is not part of his plan. That it couldn't possibly be better than anybody there's enough filth on our airwaves American I, I, families hold on it. I disagree I disagree I I think there's a little I, I I think we're a little short on filth quite frankly I think we have far too much violence and not enough sex I'm just gonna uh, you know and you know how I feel about it I think there's not enough violence on television I think there's just enough to make it sexy and there's just enough uh sex to make it not sexy sad haven where our children can be taught our values not have radical values forced upon them the family it's your fucking cable bill motherfucker they you know they have like little like parental rule you don't raise your kids what the fuck am i talking about <laughs> the children we don't want that our children uh-huh enough about pronouns what is with pronouns if you really study it and look at it. Yes, if you really, okay, let's get into it. You know, hey, if you really look into it and you really study it, what? It's, it's sick. It's sick. I will protect the... Oh, you're just going to move on? That's it? That's the, that's the, that's what we get. If you really look at it, you really study it, it's, uh, it's crazy. Oh, thanks. Thanks very much. Thanks for the... Uh, shitty hack 80s comic version of reality. It's like, you know, the pronouns. What's going on with pronouns? I mean, it's like pronouns on acid. You know what I'm saying? It's like, it's like what's the deal? And then it's like, she, like she her, her, him. He, I don't know. What's up with pronouns, right? Am I right? Anyways, uh, how about those cubs? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That is pro-God. We're going to protect pro-God context and content. <laughs> Pro God context. It's a perspective that we all look at through. Now, obviously, if there is a God, it doesn't need any help from us, but let's pretend it does. It's desperately, if, if we don't sing silly songs to it, it gets very sad. And it stays in its room all day masturbating. And so we must praise it so it knows it's got some worth in the world and it knows we're on its side. And it's all about context and content, or both, or neither. I don't know. <laughs> Jesus Christ. It says content, dum-dum. Pro-God content. We have to... They're talking about clean flicks. Is what they're talking about. They're talking about shitty movies with Kirk Cameron in them. Okay, go. It's sick. I will protect the content that is pro-God. We're going to protect pro-God context and content to that end at the request of the context. context in what context did you cry out the lord's name uh, well i was engaged in uh, fornication all right that's not what we were talking about that is not the pro-god kind of it's it is certainly a pro-god context 
as it were, but not the content that we think that I would like a copy of that film if it's available in any way, by the way. Do you have it on Laserdisc? I have a very nice setup. I will do my part to protect AM radio in our... <laughs> I'm going to bring back the beautiful music of Christopher Cross. These instruments, these drums, they're played too hard. This, they call it rock and roll. But AM radio, mono is the thing. We're going to bring back mono. Not the kissing disease from high school, although I'm for it. Uh, I hear that's what killed Jeffrey Epstein, ultimately. Um, ours, you know, we like to listen to AM radio because you know what we're listening to. Millions of Americans value listening to Christian broadcasters, and you're under siege. I know what you're going through. Really? You mean they have failed ratings, too, and diminishing crowds? And this happened. This is a phenomenon that's just really happened. While they're on the road, we support you, and we are supporting all of those believers and the people that believe in you. We're not going to abandon you, and we're not going to abandon those great people that do these incredible broadcasts. They're inc Good Lord, what the fuck was that? This is just, uh, honestly, did somebody just spin his fucking teleprompter like the big wheel on, uh, on uh, Price is Right? Holy shit. What? What you're going through. And this happened. This is a phenomenon that's just really happened. Sure. While they're on the road, we support you and we are supporting all of those believers and the people that believe in you. We're not going to abandon you and we're not going to abandon those great people that do these incredible broadcasts. They're incredible people. They're brave people. They shouldn't have to be brave people. They're smart people. They shouldn't have to be brave people. Why are they brave? What the fuck are you talking about? What are you talking about? Why, why are they, what makes them brave? Besides the smell of the station, besides the shag carpet and the contact dermatitis that they get from the chair because the, the dude who does the slot before them doesn't wipe the seat down after he leaves. There should be nothing brave about it, but they're brave people because... Because why? This crazy government that we're developing more and more, it's a fascist government. The Biden administration wants to do major harm to you. You cannot let people vote for these people. You cannot let people vote for the Democrats. They're real. Well, they don't have control over them. I mean, you can convince people. I think the sentence would be you, you've got to convince people not to vote for these people because of the awful fascism they want. But not letting them vote for them sounds, sounds like fascism. I'm just saying. Wanting to change our whole system of values. Upon taking office, I will create a new federal task force on fighting anti-Christian bias. It's become a very big term, anti-Christian bias. Oh, thank God he's not going to have a big government solution like forming a committee to do an assessment and then make a, a working paper and then with federal tax dollars work on setting up a group that will have listening sessions Not believable that you have a term like that, is it, when you think about it? Is it's not believable you have a term like that when you think about it. I don't know what the fuck you just said, so yes and no. Where did that come from? And I don't know, out of your fucking head. I don't know what kind of vapor is falling out of your face that's passing itself off as words. Uh, honest to fucking God, I don't know where you're going with any of this shit. Very, a very recent phenomena. Its mission will be to investigate all forms of illegal discrimination, harassment, and persecution against Christians in America. Oh, good. So it'll be done in 20 minutes. As president, I will once again appoint rock-solid conservative judges in the mold of Justices Antonin Scalia and the great Clarence Thomas, who's doing a phenomenal job. Okay, so easily bribed and manipulated lunatics who marry QAnon psychopaths. Gotcha. Okay, good. At least we know what the standard is. Is that, is that going to be your litmus test? Are, but are they married to someone who reads QAnon stuff and buys it immediately without even thinking about it? What, uh, I need to know, you know, settled law. Strong. 
I will stand proudly with our friend and ally, the State of Israel. We will stand proudly with Israel. In what way In our first term, I kept my promise, recognized Israel's eternal capital. That was a big thing. Everybody said, oh, wow. You know, every president, David Friedman, every president for decades. Didn't do it because it was going to tip off violence in the Middle East. And, oh, look at that. We're saying during their process of getting elected, during the process. No, they didn't. The campaign, you mean? But, uh, we will... Name the capital, we will move to Jerusalem, we'll do all No, they didn't. <laughs> Honestly. These things never happened. And yeah, because they didn't. Nobody ran on that. What the fuck are you talking about? I understood why, because once I got in, <laughs> the pressure that was put on me by other countries was extraordinary. And I've told the story when I was going to move our embassy to Jerusalem, therefore covers the capital, Israel. Uh -huh. Uh, I was getting calls by leaders of other countries, very powerful leaders. Sexy leaders, sweaty leaders, big bulging muscles. Some of them, I mean, they had armadillos in their trousers. It's quite frightening, the size. Uh, some leaders not so far away from Israel, frankly. And Middle Eastern leaders, or, or you mean, we obviously don't mean Zelensky. So what is it about? It's about Jerusalem, it's about the capital. And I said, this is tough. I, I'm doing it, so there's no reason to go through these long calls. So I said, please tell them I'll call them back. This was a Wednesday. Please tell them I'll call them back on Monday. Okay. So I called back on Monday. So on, I believe, a Thursday or whatever, I announced we had a news conference. It was incredible. I announced that we were doing this. And uh, it was tremendously you know don't forget they said the world was going to come to an end if this happened literally yahua sinwar sent the note to netanyahu saying take a chance on a conditional ceasefire that we now know was a rope -a dope from his point of view that he was faking it this would give them the ability to get you know funds and openness from israel so they could directly attack israel because they viewed this as the final nail in the coffin of a two-state solution and the end of a palestinian state possibly and especially in gaza whereas uh the, the West Bank might be a possibility, but Hamas felt like they were, you know, this was this was the sign that they were looking for, that it was time, it was the end times. Nothing happened. Everybody waited. They said this will be the bloodiest thing that's ever happened in history. And Weird. It's funny that that's when, that's when Yahweh Sinwar literally says he planned October 7th from that day. Nothing happened. And I thought that was probably going to be the result, but nothing happened. But uh, I did it. So they just did. A, they decided to just do it now because, because what Biden wouldn't go further. They that's why that's why Hamas attacked Israel is because they were like, oh shit, Biden's in there and he's not a huge fan of Netanyahu, so he might not continue the expansion. And Israel therefore became the capital. Yes, Israel is the capital of Israel. In my way of thinking. I mean, in most people, in your heart, not in your head. But yeah, is, <laughs> what? Did he just say Israel is the capital of Israel? And I thought that was probably going to be the result. But uh -huh. Nothing happened. But uh, I did it, and Israel, therefore, became the capital. Um, it, hmm. It, Israel, it, really? Israel's, are you sure you, uh, can, can we put this asshole in like a pervitin drip or something? This is a hard fade. Israel's the capital of Israel now. That's great. So uh, tell me, everybody, tell me again while uh, Biden's talking about borders when he messes up uh, um, Egypt and, and Mexico as a single name while getting the leaders right and the conversations about the stuff right in the midst of all this other shit. But this motherfucker says Israel's the capital of Israel and uh, he just gets a pass. That's what we're doing. And, and don't pretend like this is the only fucking thing he said that was weird. And it was a big thing. And uh, on Monday, I called back the big... It is a big thing for Israel to be the capital of Israel. I mean, that's a big fucking capital. As, you know, to have your whole country be the capital of your whole country. I mean, just the... 
Can you imagine the governmental expenditure? Leaders in the whole world, richest leaders, biggest leaders, I said, uh, hi. Most evil leaders? What's up? <laughs> they said, I called about Israel and your naming, your naming the embassy, putting it into Jerusalem. And uh, it's. What did he name it? The John Barron Memorial Embassy? Too late, isn't it? I said, yeah, I did. I wish I spoke to you earlier. <laughs> David was there, right? That was a little easier than getting into arguments. I also recognized Israeli sovereignty over the Golan Heights. That was a big one. That was a big one. Probably not. Yeah, by the way, a lot of those folks are applauding because uh, they need that portion to belong to Israel so that when Jesus comes back and kills all the Jews uh, and brings about, you know, peace on earth after the whole Jew killing thing, um, that, you know, that that piece of ground is kind of fundamental to their beliefs about how the rapture is going to work out and all that shit. So that's a part of God's plan. <laughs> so, yeah, we did it for dollars, but probably worth trillions of dollars. As a real estate professional, I will tell you that was a that was a big deal. And, you know, they were negotiating that out for 62 years. They play, every year, planes would fly in, fly out, fly in, fly out. They'd have a meeting every year for many, many years, like over 60 years, I think. I called David Friedman into my office. I said, Dave, David, explain the Golan Heights to me, please, in five minutes or less. Now, this is Let me make a rash decision about one of the most volatile areas on the planet. Going on for 68 years or something, the planes would come in that had these big summits that leave nothing would happen. And he did. He explained it in less than five minutes. And I said, let You took even less time to think about it. Do it. And I just oh, so he just basically planted an idea virus in your stupid fucking spongy brain. And you just acted on it and got a bunch of people killed. Great. Did it. And uh, it's a big deal. But the big... I got to say, he's giving off massive Pat Robertson energy here, though. Just aging, like that that whole Pat Robertson, like... <laughs> they didn't want us to even be over there doing what we're doing, <laughs> you know? And I'm, you know, I'm, uh, it's a lot of trouble, but here we are. The thing I did, in my opinion, the biggest thing was I withdrew from the disastrous Iran nuclear deal that Israel never wanted. Now, the problem is... Well, Netanyahu didn't want it. Israel wanted it. Yeah. The Gee, and uh, Golan Heights, uh, recognizing Jerusalem as the capital, moving the embassy there, and then pulling out of the Iran deal. Uh, is Was there a fifth? What did you give Yahweh Sinwar a fucking hand job to get to set Israel up for an attack? Holy shit. You do realize if, you know, A, if Iran gets a fucking nuke, they're not using it on us. The problem is that... They're going to use it on Pakistan. Biden administration did nothing. We could have made any deal we wanted. That deal was done. Iran was broke. Totally broke. No. They, the $6 billion that was going to give, be given for the hostages in the exchange that was in a South Korean bank that was going to be used to buy food and aid and that kind of stuff, uh, that was made during Trump's administration, that South Korean uh, payments for oil from Iran that he allowed under a waiver. And then people found out it got into the news and he rescinded the waiver and says I, he broke them. I had no money because I... Everybody had no money, by the way, in the last year because all the oil companies in the world were eating shit. They were, the oil was negative $35 a barrel. Every oil co country, you know, anyone that predicated their economy on oil was fucked. Anybody buying oil from Iran... Except South Korea and three other countries and in India. ...not doing any business in the United States, right? And China stopped. They all stopped. They were doing no business. Iran was broke. They had no money for Hamas. They had no money for Hezbollah. They had... Yeah, nobody could afford fucking quadcopters and like or paragliders and Kalishnikovs and and bombs made out of sugar and fertilizer and sewer pipes. Yeah, it's a, totally a billion dollar operation. Jesus Christ, they didn't have the fucking Jericho missile, you you tit. For anything, they were totally broke, and we could have made any deal we wanted. No more new. Why didn't you? 
You still had months where you were president after the election. Weapons, you cannot let them have a nuclear weapon. And we were all set to do it. And then you were like, fuck this place and fuck America. If they're not going to have me as their president, I hope they all die in flames. The election ended <coughs> and you saw, you know, the result. It's, it's a, it'll go down as a tragedy in our country, in my opinion. One of the great tragedies that everyone knows it was all rigged and screwed up. A horrible thing happened. Uh-huh. Anytime you have mail in Yeah, but you, you still were president until January 21st. So you still could have, if there was a deal to be made... Why didn't you make the deal? If you could have made it two weeks after the election, it wouldn't have mattered, right? It, it, what, what, obviously, the Biden administration was going to follow the Obama-Biden idea that there should be a deal. So if you had made a deal and it was a good deal, if you had the ability to do it, obviously, they would have kept it. And then you were going to magically be reinstated as president anyways, weren't you? you if I if, uh, trust the plan, the, the winter's, the storm is coming or some shit, right? Two, you're going to have a crooked election. Remember that. Mail-in voting. Even Jimmy Carter with his commission. Jesus Christ. Laptop computers. You'd have to have a lap like his back then. It's fucking 2024. It's not 1974, you asshole. You can't have mail-in voting. Yes, you can. The entire state of Colorado does just fine. France gave it up. You know, France had a, an election recently. 30 no, they didn't. That, you're talking about hand counting. They, no, they, they they had handwritten, they filled out things, but the people mailed their ballots in. Lots of people mailed their fucking ballots in. What the fuck are you talking about? They just, they did, they tallied with computers, but they didn't count the direct ballots. With, they checked it with computers. What the fuck are you talking about? Six million votes, paper ballots, same day voting, voter ID, very simple. The election ended, you had a winner, you had a loser. And, uh, but anytime you have mail-in voting, you're going to have problems. Most countries, many countries have just given it up. You can't, it can't possibly. Bullshit. But with the historic uh, Abraham Accords, we did the... The Abraham, Abraham, the Hamahama Accords, the Abraham, 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 the what? You're going to have problems. <coughs> Most countries, many countries... The Abraham Accords? I mean, it's very difficult to say, you know, because, you know, if you read the Bible, it's not. You know, if you're if you hang around a bunch of Christians, they'll all tell you. They'll all tell you how to say it. Abraham. It's like it's a, a, you'd be amazed how often that name comes up. It's it just rolls right off the tongue. It's just giving it up. You can't it can't possibly work. Ask him about Isaac. But with the historic uh, Abraham Accords, we did the Abraham. Abraham. Hey, baby. Abraham Accords, it's one of the greatest things ever done for peace in the Middle East. But uh, the Biden administration didn't take advantage of it. And they didn't take advantage of the weakness at that time of Iran. So when I... Were well, they supposed to get Iran to sign on to the Abraham Accords? Were you going to do that? Got out. Iran went about selling oil at levels they've never hit before. China went back to buying... India went back to buying, France went, they all went back to buying, everybody was buying. Yeah, because the only reason they stopped was because it was 2020. It wasn't because of what you did, it was because nobody was buying oil because nobody was fucking going anywhere. And now Iran has $235 billion. They made it over the last three years, $235 billion. And they're saving it for a rainy day. Iran is a very rich country right now. Yeah, because they obviously aren't spending it on high-dollar military weapons. The fucking Hamas and Hezbollah are firing sewer pipe rockets. And uh, what a shame. It was a great time. We could have negotiated any deal. We don't want to hurt anybody, but we just don't want them to have a nuclear weapon. Because when they have a nuclear weapon... Well, why, again, why didn't he negotiate the fucking deal? I mean, this is all bullshit, of course. But I don't know why he thinks this is actually a good argument. What, you just decided after you lost the election, like, fuck America and the world. I hope they get a nuke. That's what you were thinking? You wouldn't just think, like, ah, fuck, man, we lost. But uh, while we fight this, we really do have a chance to get Iran to not have a nuke. And we could save millions of lives if we manage to do this. No. Your, your response was just like, I hope they use it on, on Israel. Very bad things are going to happen. And they're very close to having that now. That would well, obviously, no thanks to you. You ended the, the deal and then you refused to make another one when supposedly it would have been easy, you lazy fuck.
the election not been rigged, we would Thanks, have had Patricia. a deal with Iran within one week. Uh, why did it matter? You were still president. What the fuck is that? That's been, ah, uh, that drives me crazy. Like this, he says this shit all the time, like it's a win. Motherfucker, this makes you look terrible. This is, seriously, this makes you look like the most petty, violent, vengeful prick that's ever existed on the earth. You lost an election, so you're like, fuck it. Let Iran get a nuke and blow up Israel. Fuck them. That's, that's, if you could have had a deal in a week, why don't you make the deal in a week? And then when you're making the argument that I really won the election and this would have been, I'm much better, you... Shit, people might have even gone, well, there's something to this. I mean, he kept working after the election. He didn't just fucking phone it in and make it all about him. He could have done that. Shit, he could have probably launched an attack on the Capitol to try and fuck up the vote, and he didn't. He just spent all of his time trying to make sure Iran doesn't get a fucking nuke. Good Lord. That election, one week, they were dying to make a deal because... Then why didn't you? Why not? Oh, my fucking God. That's so weird. It's so fucking weird. Really, they were hurting. And uh... if they were hurting, why didn't you use that at the time to make the fucking deal? Why would you let them get closer to getting a bomb just because you're mad at America? Honest to God. I'm never going to let this go. This makes, n this is fucking. Like, if maggots, if you're looking for, like, the worst thing about this motherfucker, that's it. And he's telling you, if he had lost the election, he'd have made a deal with Iran in a week. He was still president. He could have made the deal, but fuck you. I hope you die like fucking, uh, like a, a nightmare that uh, Linda Hamilton has in fucking Terminator. I hope you're holding on to a fucking chain link fence, looking at your kids on a playground as your skin gets flayed off your fucking skeleton. Like that, because because I lost. Boo fuckity who. That's it. Right? What other excuse is there? Other than the fact that he's full of shit and there was no deal to be had and he fucked up the one deal we did have and he brought us closer, you know, to, than ever to ha them having a weapon and just fucking didn't feel like doing anything. It would have been a great deal for, <coughs> for the world. It would have been Why not do it? Oh my fucking God. This is going to drive me crazy. Jesus Christ. Oh, thanks, Carrie. Watching from Australia. Hello. How are you? Fair dingham. <laughs> deal for them. I was... I want them, I want everybody to be happy. They just can't. Well, then why didn't you do it, you fucking asshole? You fucking, you, you literally, if anyone dies from an Iranian nuclear weapon, it's your fucking fault. You had them up against the ropes. They would have done it in a week. They were so broke and poor. They were in the perfect position and you were like, fuck it. Right? How am I, how am I supposed to see this? How is anyone supposed to see this other than that? That you willfully av avoided making a deal that would have saved the world from another country, by the way, run by religious lunatics, um, stopping them from having a bomb. You could have done it and you chose not to because you lost the election. Because you're a, a petty, tiny, flatulent fuckwit. A nuclear weapon so it was one of those things but yeah it's one of those things that, again one. ukraine wouldn't we wouldn't have been, i just looked at something that some reports that just came out on ukraine the death there and destruction is just unbelievable yeah russia's lost four hundred thousand soldiers mm -hmm. yeah they blame you because if you were in there it, we wouldn't have protected Ukraine and Russia would have run roughshod over the fucking country. They would have taken it in six fucking days. And Israel would have never been attacked. All of these things. Bullshit. Yahweh Sinwar, the military head of Hamas, said they planned it from the minute you you recognized the Golan Heights, you fuckhead. They were, they, they were it was all a matter of, of when, not if. One of them would have happened. And you, again, you wouldn't have had inflation.
Well, that's because the economy wouldn't have recovered and no one would have bought anything and we would have all been waiting for the military to give us fucking AstraZeneca shots in our arms in the parking lot of a fucking Walmart. Because it was caused by the price of oil. It was caused by the price of energy. Yes, because the world had been closed and was opening. And also supply chain. And obviously, we're paying what I would call an anti-slavery tax right now, which I'm fine with. And everything went up and is out of control. Now every, everything is hurting. Everything is hurting. And yeah, that's why, that's why th they had to take 300 chairs out of that place. Because uh, even those folks, AM radio is so expensive now. <coughs> what an asshole. And by the way, the number... By the way. Inflation... This is almost over, by the way, and then I can rest my voice and then go do a show at 1030 tonight. And if you're a patron, patreon.com slash Sparks, you can watch the show. I have no idea what I'm going to talk about tonight, and it won't be this shit. <laughs> I improvise these shows. I don't prep at all, and that's the hard part. Try, try not being funny if you're me. It's work. So... Massive over a three year period. I think the real number is probably 38% that no matter how much you made, you're losing a lot of money. You're way. Yes, everybody. Yeah. Uh, yes. We're all, we're all as broke as you are. Yes. None of us, none of us have eaten in days. We're all falling apart. No one's been to a football game. No one's watching streaming services. Anyway, they've shut them all down. No one has eaten out anywhere. Amazon has stopped. They've run it. They, they're overwhelmed. They're buried under cardboard because nobody's ordering anything anymore. The eight ball. I also cut off funding for the United Nations organizations that were funneling billions of taxpayer dollars to Hamas. Yet Joe Biden gave it back close to a billion dollars. He gave him a billion dollars back. I also ended, as you remember, Nord Stream 2, the Russian pipeline. And then. They oh, and by the way. Uh, no. No. The, uh, let, let's just be abundantly clear. Um, the, the, his back and forth about Nord Stream was about muscling NATO and trying to get Germany to back off. The intention was, and he got permission from Russia essentially to do this, was like, scare Germany that this is going to wreck their economy and, and tell them you're going to shut down Nord Stream 2 and not allow them to use it and, and get Germany to start leveraging against NATO. That's, that was part of the setup for fucking Ukraine. Eat shit. Oh, I like Russia. I'm so friendly. This is the biggest thing they ever did. I ended it. Nope. They, it, by the way, it was half paid for by Germany. That was the whole point. That's why it gave it was leverage against Germany. Think of it. The biggest thing, the biggest deal, the most profitable deal, the greatest deal they've ever done. I ended it. It was dead. And by no, it wasn't. Came in and he approved it right away. But he killed the Keystone pipeline. He killed our pipeline. He let. Ru That's not our pipeline. It's a Canadian. It's Canadian shale oil build their pipeline to Germany and all over Europe. And then they say, well, Trump was uh, very friendly with Putin. Putin said, man, if you're a friend, I'd hate like hell to see you as an enemy. I'd like to. How, how did you? Uh... I'm sorry. Nope, I'm not going to go there. <laughs> not going to go there. I'm just saying. If Putin needs his watch back, he's going to have to talk to Ronnie Jackson. Ask a man uh, who's with us tonight, and he's been with me the entire way, Ambassador David Friedman, just come up and say a few words and give us a little of that wisdom, please. Thank you. A little of that wisdom. Thank you, David. It's wonderful. It's just great to be here. Great memories. Really great memories. Yeah, the best memories I have is standing on stages with this guy, because when we were in boardrooms, it was a fucking nightmare. Mr. President, I just want to say a couple of things that I think everybody here thinks is obvious, but we need to say it anyway. Yeah, please. Um, the first, you were the greatest friend that Israel ever had in the Oval Office. By far. Y yeah, there are a myriad of people in the Israeli government, especially, that disagree, but yeah. By far. The, the second thing is that... The, the you were the greatest friend that Ukraine ever had in the entire world. 
tragedy <coughs> is now befalling the state of Israel, and it breaks me up my heart. And I, I work on this every day, and I go back and forth. I'm wearing a, uh, this is to commemorate the hostages, still 130 hostages that are being held in the worst conditions. Um, as you said, this wouldn't have happened uh, had we still been in power, had you still been in power, had I still been working for you. Yeah, it would have. It just would have been coordinated better with Hezbollah and Iran because there was no deal that was going to stop them. For obvious reasons, because the money that now Iran is using to sell oil, the money that you cut off to the Palestinians that they now have, the money you cut off to the United Nations that they still have, all of this was the lubricant uh, that enabled um, Hamas to conduct their horrible attacks in Hezbollah too. Uh, it, took, it took a lot of money. You cut it all off and President Biden brought it all back. And so we, we really wish, we really wish he never left the office because we're feeling. And again, uh, uh, the attempt by the Biden administration, uh, both with uh, the uh, Gaza Strip and with uh, Yemen, trying to increase humanitarian aid to basically buy the peace was a part of the strategy that Netanyahu was using. Uh, the problem is you're dealing with religious fanatics who just want every Jew on the planet dead. And that's th therein lies the rub. Pain right now because of that. And, and the last thing, the last thing I'll just say is when you move the embassy to Jerusalem, um, and, and we were there together in the Situation Room. Okay, so both of you are responsible for this idiotic move. And you got, you got pushed back from other countries, but you also got pushed back from some of your own people. And I was there with you, and I remember what you said. You said, I promised I'm going to do this, and this is the right thing. And the signal that you sent to the world, not just... Is exactly why Hamas, Hezbollah, Iran, and all their proxies decided this was the time to finally destroy Israel. They doubled down on it. To those people in that room, but to the whole world, as the United States will stand with its allies, and the United States will not flinch from the... Th Un until uh, every Jew returns to Israel and Jesus can come back and kill them all for the evangelicals. ...of rogue nations. And that message, as much as it elated me and it elated everybody else in this room, that message resonated... It res with Yahweh Sinwar. ...in North Korea and... ...in Qatar. ...resonated in Iran. Res Mostly Qatar, where Hamas's leadership is. ...in Russia. And when the history of books are written, I believe that is one of the reasons why, under your administration... People will look at the conversations in the Middle East around it that led directly to the tinderbox that we're experiencing currently. There were no new wars. We owe you a great, great... A great okay, first of all, uh, there have been no new wars, by the way, um, under Joe Biden as far as the ones we're in. Again, other wars breaking out. Is, is this asshole really going to make the case that, like, the Syrian civil war or the fight between the Kurds and the Turkish, you know, forces, all that kind of shit that happened under Trump, that that doesn't count because... Because we actually had boots on the ground in those areas. Great gratitude that we cannot repay. Thank you. Thank you, David. You did a great job. Uh, you know, uh, during the debate, Hillary Clinton said, he will lead us into war. He will lead us. Look at the attitude. Look at this guy. He's going to lead us into war. I said, no, no, my attitude will keep us out of war. We defeated ISIS 100 percent. No, you didn't. ISIS is actually uh, where the suicide bomber that killed the 13 soldiers in Afghanistan came from. ISIS-K is the group that surrounded uh, Bagram and would have been killing soldiers to this day if we hadn't gotten the fuck out. Um, they're also... Um, spread throughout Iraq and other places. They still exist. The, you're talking about the caliphate, and that's a dream anyway. There's no actual territory. And then pulled everyone out, and we were, I guess they say, the first one in 72 years or something like that. I'll tell you just a quick story about... Also, uh, Biden has not started any wars. For the record. What war has Joe Biden started? Even the, the aid to Israel and the Palestinians themselves is the same. Almost dollar for fucking dollar. That, that never, that doesn't matter. We're just going to zone, we're just going to zip right by that. And also somehow Russia attacking Ukraine is our fucking fault. 
from the, so a friend of mine very by the way uh, uh biden got us out of afghanistan after 21 fucking years I, new york has a beautiful office in a big building and of course from the elevator he has beautiful stone and jerusalem stone is a jerusalem stone it is that we're jerusalem Every time i see him he tells me about the stone how beautiful it is i get tired of it actually look how beautiful and he goes, it's Jerusalem stone. Jerusalem comes out of Jerusalem. He's Jewish. It comes out of Jerusalem. Look at it. It's so beautiful, isn't it? I said, yeah. You know, for the 12th time, I said, yeah, it's beautiful. Yeah. <coughs> Could, it never occurred to you that maybe he thinks it's beautiful because of his attachment to Jerusalem on a spiritual level, as well as just the physical attractiveness. Oh, I'm sorry. You can't see past just the veneer of things. Big deal. So it's almost like uh, people get sick of you of hearing how rich you are when you're not. What happened is when I approved the deal, and now we're all set with the deal was done. It was uh, done and it went. Yeah, the deal was done and it went. Nobody was fighting and there was no bloodshed, no nothing. Uh, but. I said, let's build the embassy because this embassy will never get built the way government works. So a general came in with a $2 billion form for me to sign. That was what they were going to build on. Build on. They were going to spend. Spend on building it? That's what they were going to spend on building it? $2 billion to build an embassy. $2 billion to build. I think of it as a one or two. Hold on. came in with a $2 billion form for me to sign. That was what they were going to build on. Build on. They we're going to spend $2 billion to build. They're going to spill on building it? To build. I think of it as a one- or two-story building. How do you do that? I'm in the real estate business. You don't spend that kind of money. Because of security, national security, because, because like, the requirements for cybersecurity even in a building like that. Hey, fuck what? You don't actually think we have the Pentagon spends $500 on a hammer and $800 on a toilet seat, do you? You dipshit. But they were going to spend hundreds of millions of dollars Ugh. on a lousy site, bad location. We like good locations. And I sent David. I said, David, go check. Well, a uh, lousy view, but it's the safest place. We're not talking about safety. We want it to look shiny. Because they want me to sign. I told the general I didn't want to sign $2 billion. I didn't want to be foolish. And uh, I said, go see if we have any buildings. You know, the United States has been around a long time. Usually we have the best site, or you could look at the post office site in Washington, D.C. Always get a post office, because that's always the first thing the federal government, they always have the best location. But I said, see if we have a, a good site in our inventory of sites. Oh, you mean like the hotel you lost? And lo and behold, two days later, David Friedman calls me back. He said, sir, we have a great site. It's much better than the site that we're talking about, and we own it. I said, does it have a building on it? Yeah, it does. And it's set back. You know, there are certain rules. They want it set back, I guess, for obvious reasons. Safety. Explosions on a sidewalk. Obvious reasons called explosions on a sidewalk. I said, does it have a building on it? Yeah, it does. And it's set back. You know, there are certain rules. They want it set back, I guess, for obvious reasons called explosions on a sidewalk. It's one of my favorite plays. Uh... Who is it? Arthur Miller, I think. Explosions on a sidewalk. It's set in the Bronx. It's about a it's about a guy's uh, you know he turns eighteen and goes into the military and gets his first hand job in a park before he goes off to war. The building is set back. It's up high. It has beautiful views. Everything is perfect, and we could probably use the frame, use the structure, save a lot of money and a lot of time. So this new building would have probably never been built. It would be built for years and years, decades probably would have spent billions of dollars and they would have had nothing. I said, let's get it built. Yeah, it's weird. We actually have a lot of buildings in the world and they do manage to get built. It's fucking, isn't that weird? And then it, like, I, we have you ever, have you guys ever heard of us trying to build an embassy in a country and not being able to? Seriously. I'm, tr I'm racking my fucking brain. So he comes back, he sends me some pictures. I say, listen, go out and, Let's see what we can do. And you have to do me a favor. You're in Jerusalem. See if you can make a good deal on Jerusalem stone. Because a friend of mine tells me it's so expensive and so impossible to get. So David calls me back about five days later. He said, sir, I think we can do the building. I said, how much, David? 
About $490,000. I said, you got to be kidding. I said, does that include Jerusalem stone? He said, the whole place is Jerusalem stone. We have so much Jerusalem stone in Jerusalem, we could get it cheaper than brick. So, right? That's a beautiful... Yeah, the best thing about Jerusalem stone is that when there's an explosion on the sidewalk, it shards perfectly and shreds everyone behind it. It's a, uh, you know, but fuck engineers. What do they know? building. I don't think they ever have to do anything with it. I think it's beautiful. They'll probably someday knock it down and spend $3 billion to build a building that's... Yeah, so you mean so, like, our enemies overseas can't hear through the fucking walls? But it's a beautiful building. So we're not... You mean, you mean so that they can actually go through it and pull out all the uh, listening devices that Mossad put in a long time ago? They named the site and did the capital of Israel and all of the... Yeah, you did it. Yeah. Donnie does Jerusalem. Things that all other presidents failed, many, many presidents, they all campaigned on it and then they never had the guts. I now realize why, though, because of the pressure from other countries. Yeah, and the death, the whole death thing. We got it built, and we got it built in about five months, and it opened, and we were to great fanfare, and it's such a beautiful building. It it's great, yeah. I stay in it every time I go there. Yes, and it's just about all in Jerusalem stone. They even sent me a piece of Jerusalem stone with a dedication. Okay, so because it was cheap, obviously. I proudly and, and you like cheap things. In my office, but under my leadership. Uh, shouldn't you return that to? Shouldn't the National Archives have that? I think in that the rules. We will restore peace through strength before I even arrive at the Oval Office. Shortly after we, because we, it's going to be we win the presidency. I will have the horrible war between Russia and Ukraine settled. We'll have it totally settled. We're going to get it settled. Yeah? How's it? How are you going to say it? Uh, back to 91 borders? We're going to get it settled. Yeah, to Russia's benefit, I'm guessing? People are dying. Too many people are dying. You, you mean too many Russians? That's the problem? That evening when I was interviewed on CNN six, seven months ago by... A person that didn't like me particularly. Six, seven months ago? They were doing it because they wanted to come a little bit more to the center and try and get some ratings because they're dying in the ratings. Whoops, there goes CNN, there goes the light. Just, the red light just went off. I wonder what that means. I wonder what that means. Uh, that you were fantasizing that CNN was there in the first place and that uh, RAV, Real America's Voices camera, just ran out of battery? But... But the, the Sony A5100 that they were using, it's very versatile. We all know what that means, so. <laughs> we all know what that means, but mm -hmm. it was a war. All of these wars would have never. Hey, Farty, wrap it up. And none of it would have happened. Yes, it would have. Mr. President, none of it would have happened. Yes, it would have. The only difference with with Russia's attack on Ukraine is it would have been a lot shorter and we wouldn't have been able. You would have slow rolled NATO and the United States support and they would have been fucked. As the Bible says, blessed are the peacemakers, right? Blessed are the peacemakers. And blessed I are the peace through strengthers. Be, I promise I will be your peacemaker in more ways than what you think. I will be your peacemaker. In more ways than what you think. And I will... Be the only president that will be able to say this, say this and say it with great conviction. I will prevent World War Three. We're very close to World War Three. Well, if we're very close to it, and we'll already be in it, so you can't prevent it if it's already happened. And plus, I would argue that the Cold War was World War Three. I think we're really talking about World War Four at this point. It'll be a war like no other. Yeah, it'll be mostly you know like <clears throat> it'll be digital. They went to. Prime Minister Viktor Orban, who's the Prime Minister of Hungary, is a very tough... Very tough. Dumb guy. He's a very tough man. He's a strong man. He's a friend of mine. Strong man. I... Uh, he must be strong if he's a friend of yours. At least, I mean, his constitution must be uh, brutal. Um, uh, the Let's see. Hold on. Orban. There was a piece of news about him recently. Um, yeah. Where was that? Mm -hmm. Let's see. There's a couple of things. One, just open this guy up in a new tab. I'll show you this just for fun, you know. Um, 
there's two two little lovely things. <clears throat> um, uh, he was uh, apparently very tough guy, tough guy, tough guy, t you know, harsh, tough guy. That uh, Victor Orban, uh, he's if you know Sweden was going to join NATO over his dead body. Oh shit! Uh, Hungary's Victor Orban lauds new phase with Sweden ahead of its vote on NATO bid. Um, it was, uh, he, he, they're in, and uh, and also uh, he's going to actually. Apparently, he's going to um, have a new defense pact with them. Also, on top of this, um, as EU leaders grow visibly irritated, has Viktor Orban overplayed his hand? This is from February 1st. After years of punching above his weight on the international stage, Hungary's far-right leader may be seeing the limits of his influence. He totally backed down, and Sweden's now in there, and he's actually gone to them for... Um, he made a military pact with them so that it can benefit his country financially. But, you know, anyways, tough guy, tough guy. You're saying tough guy, tough guy over his dead body. Sweden never, never. No, oh, oh, how much money? Endorsed him. Can you believe it? I endorsed. I said, uh, why do you need an endorsement? You're a very popular guy. He said, I'd like to have it anyway. And he won by a record astounding number. He's a great guy. He's a strong guy, loves his country. And they were interviewing him a few weeks ago and they asked him, What's going on with the world? What are we doing? Is that what they said? They just said, what's going on with the world? I'm like, did you just fucking wake up from a coma? What are you, Encino man? What do you mean, what's going on with the world? Everything's blowing up the Middle East. You look at it. Yeah, that's what they, what's going on with the, who's, everything's blowing up. What, what a weird reporter. And you look at Ukraine and you look at possibly yeah. China and. Possibly. It's from North Korea. Everything is a disaster. Yeah. What do we do? He said, it's a very simple thing. Elect Donald Trump president of the United States, and it's all going to go away. He was the only person that people listened to. He said it actually stronger than that, but I don't want to say. He said everybody was afraid of Trump. I don't know if they were afraid or not. I don't care if they were afraid or not, but they, we wouldn't be having any of these things that are happening right now. Not yeah, they would. You just would have financially benefited from them. Um, Millions of people would be alive if you add it all up. Both sides. I'm talking about both sides. People are from both sides, not just from our side. Millions of people would be alive right now if everything happened differently on that horrible election period. We no longer have election. That horrible election period. Um, you're obviously not talking about the Americans that died of COVID because of your lackadaisical approach and your belief that it would go away with the, when the sun comes out and somebody just needs to drink some fucking dewormer and shove a light bulb up their ass. We used to have election day. Now we have election period. Some of Who gives a shit? Attack the votes for their uh, validity or shut the fuck up. I don't care when they vote. Last for 40 By the way, the reason he's mad about this, the reason they want same-day voting is because the only hope they have is October surprises. And if you can vote early before they drop their bullshit story, they, 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 don't, they can't grab you on that. They have to start their October surprise way earlier. They have to make it like a, a June surprise. Hold on. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Thank you. It's a very manly sneeze. They have to make it a June surprise. And if you do that, then it gives people time to go, oh, wait, this is bullshit. Five days. And what they do during those 45 days is very bad. A lot of bad things happen. Oh, I can do a lot of bad things in 45 days. We'll stop the disaster known as Bidenomics, and we will return to Meganomics, putting America first at all times. We oh, you mean like uh, the, the Chinese tariff war that was aimless and didn't actually, and ended in a deal for China that was better for them and they didn't even live up to? Stop Biden's inflation nightmare. I will cut your taxes and regulations, and we will drill, baby, drill. Our, our... Uh, there are 9,000 unused oil leases in the country. If we were going to drill, they'd be drilling already. We already are, the, the U.S. is producing more oil right now than it ever has. We have more than anybody. Remember that. More than anybody. Liquid gold, I call it. Boy. On day one, I will seal the border and stop the invasion of our country. It's an invasion just like a military invasion. Yeah. Yeah. But, but instead of guns, toddlers, and instead of soldiers, family units. But basically, it's like a military and and pink backpacks and sandals and shit like that. You know, I mean, they don't have tanks or drones or guns or bombs or any of that shit. But other than that, it's exact. They're not wearing camo and you can see them and they line up when they arrive. 
I mean, it, maybe it's, you know, it's closest to, it is like a military invasion, but from the British in the 1700s. Three years ago, we had the most secure border in U.S. history, and now we have the worst border in the history of the world. There's never been a border so bad as this or so... Uh, gibberish. Uh, Afghanistan, Pakistan, uh, Afghanistan, Iran, Iranian border just recently. Chad, the Congo, Sudan. As soon as I take the oath of office, I will terminate every open borders policy of the Biden administration, and we... Oh, there are none, so that'll be easy. Begin the largest domestic deportation operation in American history, because we have no choice. We have. So you're just going to round up brown people? It's just going to go door knocking? Anybody who speaks Spanish, put them on the bus? No choice. You do have a choice, actually. You can vet people, and you can go through a process, you know, that's... It's legally justified and, and, and the like that won't end up getting, you know, entire family units split up or people killed. But I mean, you're talking to a large group of Christians, obviously, so. We'll also use Title 42 to end the child trafficking crisis by... Re Title 42 exacerbated the child trafficking crisis where there is one, if there is one, because it created... The, the recidivism we see at the border. People can try multiple times. If you're trying to get across the border and you've already paid and you keep getting thrown out, you could try again under Title 42 and it doesn't ding your, your, you know, your ability to come and become a citizen eventually. You just keep getting kicked out. So, oh, no, you can't pay this time? Here, take this kid with you. All traffic children to their families in their home countries starting immediately. Starting immediately. Sharding immediately. We're going to shart these kids right out of here. We will bring... Also, uh, if they're trafficked, why would you return a trafficked child to the people that trafficked them in the first place? So if I'm following you on this, these kids were sold by their parents to somebody so that they can be sold for sex in the United States? Is that what you're talking about when you talk about child trafficking? And your idea is we found them. We could place them with a family here that wants to adopt or protect them or or, or even orphanages and raise them safely. Um, Catholic orphanages. What's going on with Catholics? Or we can, without due process, put them on a fucking bus or a plane and send them back to the people that sold them in the first place? That's the theory? That's the plan. Mr. I lost 800 fucking kids and never bothered to keep track of them because Stephen Miller said we never want to see these kids again in the first place anyways. What? Law and order in... I do have a show, but my show is at 1030 at night tonight. So I'm good. Thank you for worrying. Country, I will direct a completely overhaul DOJ to investigate every radical out of control prosecutor in America for their illegal, racist in reverse enforcement of the law. He means black prosecutors going after him. Black on orange crime is apparently upsetting him. It's, a, it's the, the great candy corn wars. The doing is so illegal. N no, no, it's not. Some, some of what these uh, of these problematic prosecutors is doing is is ill advised. Might be a mistake. I think it is in a lot of cases. It's not illegal though. That's the thing. It's within their purview. I am also going to indemnify all police and police officers. All What's the difference, really? Law enforcement officials throughout the United States to protect them from being destroyed by the radical left who are taking strong actions on crime. Define strong actions. They want to take their pensions. They want to take their job. They want to take their family. They want to destroy their lives. Where am I supposed to take their family? I don't, I don't to Disneyland? It's because they want to protect us, and uh, we're going to indemnify those people. We're going to indemnify the law enforcement officers that can clean up and straighten out all of the crime that's going on. We yeah, they can do that without, you know, shooting somebody who's obviously posing no threat and, un and unarmed, I guess. Is that the that's what you're talking about? You mean just, just basically, you just want to give them the right and the ability to just put down anybody that looks at them cockeyed. Um, call it the Al Capone Scarface um, uh, system. Yeah? I'm at a level that nobody's ever seen before. Well, we did in the 90s, and it's gone down. It went down faster than it did in the 90s. <laughs> what are you going to do? I mean, we had, a, we, had a, uh, we had a Democratic president then, too.
our inner city. You do, you do realize that, but for COVID, the way things are going with Biden, if he stays in for another four years, we're going to end up with a, sur a surplus like Clinton had at the end of his term. Yeah. And then TYT and those assholes are going to convince everybody that it doesn't matter and it's the lesser of two evils and might as well flip a fucking coin and what difference does it make? And they're going to put a Republican in there who's going to fucking spend it on a tax break for fuck, fuck, fuck. For a disaster, we're going to rebuild our cities into beacons of hope, safety, and beauty better than they've ever been before. We'll work with Democrats. They're all run by the Democrats. All of these horrible places that have become so horrible. Once Bakersfield? Beautiful, but have become so... Barstow? Unsafe. And we will take over the terribly run capital of our nation in Washington, D.C. There's and paper and cans everywhere, except where there aren't. It up, renovate it, and rebuild our capital city so that it no longer is a nightmare of murder and crime, but rather it will become <laughs> the most beautiful <laughs> capital anywhere in the world. We're going to make it the most beautiful capital anywhere in the world. It once probably was, but we will make it definitely. But we're going to clean up the crime. People go from Tennessee mm -hmm. to Washington, D.C., yeah. and they end up getting killed. They end up getting shot. Well, I, I would, I, I, well, you're, it's a good thing you're in Tennessee. You could tell them not to go. Mugged. Terrible thing. They, wait, they get killed and then they get mugged? I mean, talk about adding insult to injury. That's terrible. They could at least do it, you know, in, in, the, in reverse order. And then it would kind of make sense, you know, getting rid of the witness and all. Just kill somebody and then rob them. I mean, what's the point? Happen, and uh, can't be that way. Can you imagine foreign leaders coming in from other lands? They hear all about what? Not during the summer of 2020, certainly. In the United States, and they're driving in dirty roads, potholes all over the place, medians that are falling down into the road. Also, I don't know what that fixation is. I, I swear to God, we were, we, Summer and I were just in D.C. for my birthday. Uh, in September, I'm going back there again relatively soon. It's fine. There's crime there. It's a problem. They got to do something about it. But it's, again, n n basically 90s level. They need to work on it, but it's not, I mean, the fucking place isn't, it doesn't look like Pompeii. And crime and graffiti. Graffiti uh. all over those beautiful... Marble columns. Yes, the swastikas. They're all there. You can't go down to Lincoln Memorial. They're covering swastikas. Swastikas. Swastikers. That's the thing. They used to use paint. Now they're using stickers. Can you imagine what they must think about our country? And I worked hard on that. You know, when I was... Well, I don't know. If, uh, if it's your buddy from Syria, he might go, Oh, good. I know that symbol. I, we use those all the time. Do you, can, do you have portraits of Hitler I can buy and hang in my house? They're big in my country. Any, anytime I drive, when I saw... Yeah, by the way, uh, Syria, uh, um, Hamas in, in the Gaza Strip, big Hitler fans, by the way. Lots of lots of Hitler pictures and memorabilia there. Same thing with Hezbollah. It, 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 should, it won't surprise you at all to, to find out that uh, the people in Hezbollah um, are, are big fans of Hitler and think he should have finished the job. And that's usually only see, is something you see chanted in the streets of London. One or two tents starting to form. I said, go out there immediately and take down those tents because it was easy when you have two or three or four. But now you take a look at what's happened. It looks like tent city. No, it doesn't. Some of our most beautiful parks, what they've done to our, our country is not believable. You're right. It's not believable, especially if you fucking go there. Sad to see. Another top priority will be to take back our education system from the communists and the freaks that are destroying it. On Freaky communists. One, I will sign a new executive order to cut federal funding for any school, pushing critical race theory, transgender insanity, and other inappropriate racial, sexual, or political content onto our children. Strange you didn't feel that way when Jeffrey Epstein was scooping up high school girls uh, within a mile of Mar-a-Lago. Weird. Isn't it a bit odd that Trump only lives in areas where he's less than a 20-minute cab ride from Jeffrey Epstein's house? He's only ever had homes 
less than 20 minutes away, even in heavy traffic, from Jeffrey Epstein. It's a big fucking country. Isn't that weird? That doesn't strike you as weird. His homes are always less than a 20-minute cab ride. You know, I don't know why that is. Thank you. I will support a policy of universal school choice, allowing parents to choose the public-private charter or religious school that that best suits their children. Oh, they can choose it. They just don't get to not pay taxes so that everybody who can't afford that shit doesn't, goes without an education, essentially. And I will support America's homeschool families, including allowing five... Because I love the poorly educated. I love them. Doe-headed motherfuckers all. There's a screamer in there. 29 education savings accounts to be used for homeschooling expenses up to $10,000 a year per child, completely tax-free. So you can do that if you like it. And to me, very... Uh-huh. Importantly, I will close the Federal Department of Education and we will move everything back to the states where it belongs. And oh, you mean that back where it was when illiteracy was the rule of the land? Where they can individualize education and do it with love of parents, love of everybody. but Love of everybody, sure. Most importantly, the love and respect of their student. For their student? For, for their students, wouldn't you? They, you're, not, you're not talking about fucking these students, are you? I mean, you have always lived less than 20 minutes away from Jeffrey Epstein since at least the mid-80s, maybe even earlier. Weird. Move it back. You know, we're last on every list. We're first on the list of the cost of education per student. We spend more per student by far than any other country. But we're last in terms of results. The results. No, we're not. Just fuck off with this nonsense. Like it, the one of the reasons why, like Northern European countries are, you know, are apparently outpace uh, the United States in education and the like, is because of language. And the large part, in large part, that's because they grow up speaking multiple languages. So. They're able, that, that's considered a, like a huge plus. Their math scores aren't necessarily better than ours in general. And if they are, they're much smaller. So you can take some of our states like California or New York, for example, and they'll be right on pace with it. But we've got to factor in fucking Alabama and West Virginia and Louisiana. And that's always shocking to no one fucking with our general scores. And, and by the way, I'm a little sensitive about the whole Tennessee part of this because he's in Nashville where my aunt taught French at Vanderbilt and my uncle taught English at Nashville Tech. It's horrible. We're going to move it back to the states. I mean, I know states that will do a phenomenal job. Most of them, some I don't think will do really that good of a job. They're run, usually if they're run badly, the school's not going to be so great. But many of these states will bring back world-class education in terms of schooling and they're going to do that we're going to move it back we're going to get it out of washington we're going to move it back we're going to end the so-called also by the way the rest of these countries that are doing very well in terms of education have very centralized education they don't like fucking netherlands doesn't lay it off on the fucking provinces or anything like that it's it's it, it, there's small countries Many of them, by the way, monarchies, ironically enough, that are run with a parliamentary system. But still, they have they, they spend a shit ton of focus on it. Department of Education. We might have one desk, one person, just to make sure everyone's speaking English. Let's got to have a little bit of regulation, you know. See, so Alabama, you're on notice. Let's, let's try and keep it so that you can only like that we're going to focus on some English. But after that. You can go ahead and do what you're going to do, but you can't do worse. You know, we're at the bottom of every list. Every Bullshit. The list, we're at the bottom, and yet we spend more. And again, I don't know what the fuck list he's talking about. But what, literacy? Get the fuck out of here. But uh, again, 
this dumb motherfucker thinks that China has the second biggest economy in the world. Russia has the second biggest military in the world. Uh, that uh, China has 1.4 billion people and, they're, and Xi Jinping is smart and sharp because he rules them with an iron fist instead of their fucking dying hand over fist. I'm going to move it back to the States. I will also take historic action. We're going to do it just like abortion. And you're going to be able to, if you want to abort education, Alabama, you'll be able to do it defeat the toxic poison of gender ideology and restore the timeless truth that God created two genders, male and female. Male and female aren't genders. They're sexes. Male and female is sex. Man and woman is gender. I mean, we're talking about the splitting hairs about definitions and description descriptors. Male and female is a definitive word. Man and woman is a descriptor. Let me give you an example. I am a biological male, and I believe that my characteristics as a human being allow me to be called a man because of what it means in its category. This motherfucker is a biological male. Is he a man? No. He's a fucking toddler. See what I'm saying? <laughs> so crazy. And something that I am always amazed that I have to say. Oh, we're going to, like, mutilating something, whatever. This is where he comes out against circumcision, I hope. I will keep men out oh. of women's sports. Can you imagine? Uh, the phrase would be males out of female sports, if that's what you're actually trying to do. Which they're not. This is just bigotry. And I will sign a law prohibiting child sexual mutilation in all 50 states. No more. Okay, so no circumcision. Circumcision will be outlawed in the United States. Good luck with that one. I wish somebody had done it before I was born. No more. What they're doing is crazy. I agree. I thought... My, I have a circumcision scar. I had no idea what was going on down there. When I was a kid, I thought I had Dutch elm disease. <laughs> These are some of the things that we must do, but things that are very important to this particular audience. We have to do a lot of other things, but this particular... But you guys don't care about that stuff. I save that for, you know, the sort of financial people. Hold on one second. One moment, please.
Okay, so I'm back. Sorry, uh, at a girlfriend call, so we had to uh, talk about something or whatever, um, just uh, show related and that kind of stuff. So, anyways, hi, back, almost done. I don't know what the fuck left we have of this dickhead, but pardon the pause, and we'll finish this. Audience wants to know how we feel. He's also, uh, by the way, a sweaty, weathered mess. Some people are saying he's on Ozempic, and he's, which is entirely possible. I think he's just not eating and gacking himself up on stimulants like he used to, and it's making him all saggy and broken. That for those of you who live in Tennessee, I love this state. You know, bullshit. Won this state by numbers that nobody's ever won. I love Tennessee. But only because I won it. If I didn't win it, fuck you people, right? It'd be like the Iran deal times two. By the way, Tennessee, I love you guys, but if Iran gets a nuclear weapon and uses it on us, you'll be just as fucking dead. Because they'll probably hit Nashville because of its, you know, it's important as a cultural center for, you know, music and the like, so. The primer is Tuesday, March. The primer is Tuesday? Is the primer Tuesday? And then when do we paint the whole thing? Have we decided if we're going to, like, do one solid color or stripes, or are we going to do that sponge shit that they show on HGTV that I never get around to doing? 
It's less than two weeks from now, so get out there and vote. And I have a feeling you're going to vote for a guy named Trump, I think. So get out there and vote. And it's important to... These people aren't from fucking Nashville, dummy. They're there for a convention. But not that we have a race, because we really essentially don't have a race. Nikki is not a race. But we have to send a message... Awkward. ...to these radical left lunatics that on... Mm -hmm. November 5th, we're coming. We're coming in numbers that they've never seen before. Ew. Because when the numbers are that way, and I think they have a chance of being that way, you can only cheat so much. You can only cheat so much. So we have... Right, yeah. If you said that, mention that to the villages this time. Really get a... We have to let the world know that we're coming. We're going to come in big numbers. And Ew. November 5th, we're going to get rid of a man who is the worst president in the history of our country, I think, by far. Well, technically, you are, according to that recent study, you are, by far. Biden's 14th. That's pretty good. <coughs> so get out and vote on the 5th. You got to get out and vote. No, no, they don't. Very near. Get out and send that message. But the big. Yeah, get out there and send it, but only on one day. And if you can't do it that day, then don't do it. No mail-in votes. And if they use computers, go home. It is in November, but you got to send the message right now. So even though it's not much of a election per se, you got to get out there and you have to send that big, beautiful message that we're coming for generations. America's religious broadcasters have helped. By the way, the reason he's saying that is because he's getting 50% of the Republican Party right now, and it's very hard to argue you're going to do well in November if only half of your fucking party is showing up for you, even when you're running away with it. The people of this country live up to the words of our <coughs> glorious motto, in God we trust, we will never change that motto. You know, there are many, many people that want to change that model. That model will never change. That model? That model, model. Motto he says motto first, and then he says. For generations, America's religious broadcasters have helped the people of this country live up to the words of our glorious motto, in God we trust, we will never change that motto. It's his motto. You know, there are many, many people that want to change that model. That model will never change that. And then he says model. Is that, it's not just me, right? Yeah. He says motto the first two times, and now it's model. Motto will, that then he goes motto, back to motto will never change. He says model twice and then motto twice again just to get, all right. It's a magnificent motto. And we, yeah, sure it is. And we're not going to let people talk about that. We're not going to, yeah, okay, good. So, uh, so free speech is out. We're not going to let people talk about that. We're going to start, I don't know, throw people in jail for what they talk about now. If they even talk about changing, we're not going to let them talk about it. I'll never change. This great organization has helped spread the word of God, the love of Christ, the stories of the Holy Bible and the voices of fame. What, 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 what would be one of those stories? Just off the top of your head. Stories for you know the, the stories from the Bible. What 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 might might be what could possibly just one of it just you know not it doesn't have to be a big one. Just a you know a little one, just a little Bible story. You know. And the little drummer boy doesn't count. Evangelical people and Jesus Christ. Uh, you know, it, they say in, in Revelations uh, um, Part 2, The Reckoning, um, it says uh, that the Antichrist will have a, a difficulty saying the word evangelical. It'll be very difficult for him to say. The organization has helped spread the word of God, true, the love but, of Christ, the stories of the Holy Bible, and the voices of famed evangelical people. and <laughs> Famed evangelical <laughs> only only satan has difficulty saying evangelical evangelical 
Sorry? Word of God. Say it again. The love of Christ, the stories of the Holy Bible, and the voices of famed evangelical people and evangelists, uh, evangelists like... <laughs> evangelists? That's, that's the evil evangelists. Uh, that's a, the, the Blade Runner soundtrack they rejected. Evangelists? Evangelical evangelist. You're talking to Christian broadcasters, the people who speak about this shit all the time. You might want to pronounce those words correctly. The love of Christ, the uh -huh. stories of the Holy Bible and the voices of famed evangelical people and evangelists, uh, evangelists like the late, great Pat Robertson, who was a great gentleman. He was. He was, you know, and the best thing about him was he would hear somebody say something like evangelical, and he'd go, that person's clearly of the devil. <laughs> know him very well. Great evangelist. It's just like he knows he fucked that word up. He's a great evangelist. Evangelist. And of course, Billy Graham. How good was Billy Graham, right? <coughs> Billy Graham? He said, who was a great gentleman. Got to know him very well. Great evangelist. And of course, Billy Graham. How good was Billy Graham? Billy Graham? Billy Graham. Late, great Pat Robertson, who was a great gentleman. Got to know him very well. Great evangelist. And of course, Billy Graham. How good was Billy Graham, right? Yeah, Billy Green was great. I love Billy Green. Billy Green does some. He was he kicked ass. That Billy Green. Mm-hmm. Who? Billy Graham. But you, Bill, Bill. You mean Billy Graham, right? Billy Graham. That's how we say it on, on Earth One. <laughs> Billy Green. Hmm. I remember my father took me to Yankee Stadium and Billy Graham was preaching and it was amazing. I was very young. My father loved Billy Graham. Billy Graham? He was a big Billy Graham fan? I mean, I only have his first record, so I don't know. I wasn't that impressed, so I didn't buy the rest of them. But I, I understand your dad had them all on 8-track. Who the fuck is Billy Graham? Billy Graham is not my pastor. He, he's just a guy that tells it Jesus the one. But the kid is God's son. <laughs> that place was packed bigger than any World Series game, bigger than anything anybody's ever seen, and it was packed. Packed? It was packed? Well, that happens sometimes. You get, you get that if you sit too long. Uh, we would love to bring it back to those days, Jack, right? We'd love sure, yeah, absolutely. Jack Prasobic would love a crowd like Billy Green had, but, you know, that's, the, that's pie in the sky kind of a green. Bring it back to those days. Amazing. Dude, they had to remove 300 seats from the room you're in. You can't fill a fucking high school gymnasium. Our country would greatly benefit by it. Your efforts have inspired... Why, why would that be? What would he... What would he... What, 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 what would he be talking... What would he bring... What would he bring... Why would he... What, 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 would, what would Billy Green say that people would need to hear. I'm just curious. Just, you know, if you have anything, just a little, little morsel, something. You heard it when you were very young. It's been a long time, I'm sure, but you, you know, you've uh, you had time to review the tape. Millions and millions to live their values and put faith at the center of their lives so importantly. And mm. in turn, these legions of listeners, citizens, soldiers, ministers, and everyday American believers not only help defeat fascism and communism, they helped to build America into the greatest nation in the history of the world. But now we are a nation in hey. decline. We are a failing nation. Oh, they got to play the fucking background music? We are a nation that has lost its confidence, its willpower. And it I'm not late, Ali Osher. I, my show's not till 1030. Friday, my new Friday shows are at 1030. They're late. So I'm good. Strength. We are a nation that has lost its way. But we still have our Kurds, so we're fine. We are not going to allow this horror to continue. We the horror. The horror. And allow it to continue. Billy Graham is not mad. That's going to be stuck in my head all fucking night. Three years ago, we were a great nation, and we will soon... <laughs> yeah. 
You're full of great big death and fucking riots in the streets and Jesus Christ. Do you remember the summer of 2020, you dumb motherfucker? A great nation again. With your prayers, your voice, and your vote, we will reclaim our government from these horrible tyrants. We will remove the communists, Marxists, and fascists. We will defeat crooked Joe Biden. We will restore faith and family to the center of American life. And, and what, 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 what would that mean? How does that, how do you, how would one have, if one was to want to put, I'm curious, faith at the center of their life, what would that be like? How would you, how would you characterize that? How would we know it had actually happened? What would be one of the standards by which you could measure that that had occurred? Other than, I suppose, you're, you're being elected restore power to the people ladies and right on gentlemen with your help and god's grace the great revival of america <laughs> yeah use the word revival put the word revival in there they love that word it's a i don't know it's something at the beginning of that elvis movie just made me think of it it begins on november 5th 2024 great revival such a great revival gonna be a revival so again i want to thank you and can you know can i get an amen and 335 a million dollars approximately that's what i would also like along with the amen if per per amen like a dollar per amen would be fine if we could work that out i want to thank the national Religious broadcasters, I cannot state strongly enough what an incredible job you do. Why not? Are you just, I thought you had the best words. Bless you and God bless America. Thank you very much. Thank you. Hold on, I'm coming. That's, he's going to play Hold On, I'm Coming. That's it. That's it. We got through it. It's been a while. Fucking hell. <coughs> but we did it. We made it through the whole thing. Thanks very much, a uh, bunch of bullshit. Clap, 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 clap. Thank you very much. Point, boink. Clap, 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 clap. And squirt, 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 squirt. Nothing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Brain floss. Sure. Nothing. Nothing's more Christian than a weird jerk off dance in front of them. Do the double, the double handy. Yeah. Just. All right, I'm done with this bullshit. I'm going to walk up there and I'll wave at him from... Hi, okay. Thank you, clap, 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 clap. Thank you very much. I... Squirt, squirt, squirt. The bye, okay, fine, bullshit. All right, see you later, thanks. Cool, thanks, hey, squirt, squirt, you. Squirt, thumb up your ass. Okay, bye. Bye, thanks, everybody. Bye, clap, clap. See you later. You, boink, they... see you later. Okay, oh, gone. Gotta take a shit. Okay, full diaper, bye. Okay, uh, that was it. That uh, We made it through, kids. Uh, look at that. You and I, we made it together through this fantastic uh, thing. Thank you for traveling through space and time with me to a, to a time when... <clears throat> apparently, life on Earth has failed us all and we're all just floating in the void. Um... Uh, by the way, like, subscribe, give a thumbs up, support the show. See you later. Gotta go. I have a show in two hours and I gotta shower because God help me. It was a long drive. Consider yourself warned. Also, more than likely, because I'm a little under the weather and kind of exhausted, I will be doing the show, God help me, from here tomorrow morning. Wish me luck because fucking A. It's going to be a, yeah, it's going to be a lot. So anyways, uh, love you. Uh, yeah, I will, I'm going to, I will stream the show, but it's for patrons because, you know, that's the one extra thing that they get and it's not part of the political show. So I'm, I don't feel like I'm denying anybody anything or whatever. And then I'll post the show later. I've been cataloging these shows, so I will be putting them out, um, as albums and whatnot. Uh, if I ever get around to editing um, it's just putting them together into cohesive units. Um, but, uh, I gotta say, so these shows have been pretty great and having them on a Friday late night, it's pretty, it's a, it's a good time. You know, it's a, like, you'd be shocked to know that at comedy clubs, uh, the better crowd is on a late night Friday than on a Wednesday. I know you're like, what? It's true. 
Um, but at the very least, uh, I'm going to do the show and then come back here, collapse, get up, do the show tomorrow, radio, and then after that, I'm driving back to L.A. So, yeah, I'm going to Flappers. I'm going to go eat, and then I'm going to go to Flappers. So, <clears throat> well, I'm going to nap, then eat. And then go, and I'm going to shower, and then I'm going to nap, and then I'm going to eat, and then I'm going to go. No, I'm going to shower. What I'm going to eat while I shower. Mm-hmm.